This is it. This is the final video of the year, and I realize by the time this comes out, it'll be like way into the future because it takes so long to edit, but I've decided to do Squid Game the Challenge as my final video. Why? Because of my amazing dress sense. Yes, I don't know if you could tell, I made this myself. And these are women's clothes, but it doesn't matter. What does matter is that Squid Game came out this year. And I'm not talking about the show. The popular thing that Netflix made during 2020, when everyone had time, the massive sensation that captured the minds of many had gone on to do a fantastic season. Then Mr. Beast did a real video replicating that with YouTubers. It was massively successful. And then Netflix decided, damn, I'm gonna do that too. And they replicated the show, but it wasn't as successful. Some people love the show, some people hate it. And all I can say is that I am going to drink every time someone cries in the show. Fair warning, don't do this. And again, fair warning, a lot of people cry, so I'm going to take very minor sips because I don't want to die. But this is my final video for the year. I hope you've enjoyed all the content that's been put out so far. I hope you subscribe by the end of this video. I don't know if I'll even be making sense. It's going to be a really long one. And all I can say is one more thing. If this video gets a mully, I will try and apply for the next Squid Game. You can hold me to it. All right, let's look at the show. As I said, the show came out this year and it was rated in the mid 40s sometimes 50s on metacritic and rotten tomatoes some people really loved its style and the groundbreaking techniques of having 400 contestants every single one of them mic'd up and having interviews so that you don't actually see a protagonist whereas with most reality shows you do other people were saying it was hard to follow it didn't actually follow a structure and to make matters worse, there were controversies way beyond the show, like lots of contestants complaining that the work conditions were really bad, some people saying they didn't get fed, other people saying they caught pneumonia, and other various things. And of course, the most popular of them all, the winner, not only were they revealed on social media way too early, but they hadn't been paid in over a year after the show's completion. So this show has a lot of things surrounding it. I wanted to take a look at the show itself, talk about it and try and make sense by the end of it. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to go on next year. Whew. Every time I watch this content, my eyes get injured. Speaking of which, getting injured is unfortunately just a part of life. But if you somehow find yourself in this position, luckily I learned about Morgan & Morgan, who just happens to be America's largest injury law firm. Have you or someone you know had a bad injury? I know I have. Every time I go anywhere and do anything, I seem to be the clumsiest person on earth. Just last week, I tripped on my own two feet and fell on the concrete. I ate dirt. Morgan & Morgan make it super easy to see if you have a case. It only takes minutes and you can do it from the comfort of your own couch. Which, if you're injured from an accident, is definitely a plus. Best of all, you don't pay a fee unless you win the case. They really make the process that easy. Not all law firms are the same and Morgan & Morgan are the biggest law firm for a reason. And they are not afraid to fight for the biggest possible reward just to compensate you. Your injury could be worth millions. So why not start a claim with America's largest law firm? with just one click. It's so easy, you can start a claim right now with Morgan & Morgan using my link in the description. Thanks guys, don't sue me, I'm trying to catch feelings, not a case. Okay. Squid Game, the challenge. Episode one, morbidly curious. This is where I was morbidly curious. So I was wondering like how a show like this would take on a reality sense because obviously one of the hugest things in the actual Squid Game is that the people die. So I don't know, if was that really gonna happen in reality? Turns out no. But weirdly enough, some people acted like they did die and it created a weird dynamic because we're sitting there watching the show knowing these people just get up when you say cut, but they're pretending like they don't even though it's reality. So sometimes it gives off this weird vibe of it's half trying, but not trying hard enough and it's sort of off-putting in ways. Other times, it's actually interesting to see dynamics being created and what people will do and the lengths people will go through for money. So I'm on the fence, but the show starts off in different locations where people are kidnapped, like the original show, and taken into the Squid Game quarters. It's like Willy Wonka in a chocolate factory, going after the golden ticket. Um, Willy Wonka doesn't go for the golden ticket. Charlie does. You crazy lady. I haven't even started drinking. That's not how that works. Okay. Four 
$1.56 million. It also has the largest cash prize of any reality TV show ever, $4.56 million. That is impressive, I will say. It's also absolutely mind-boggling that they got 456 contestants to be mic'd up, do interviews, and I can only imagine how big the footage was that they had to cut. So I do give them props for this, in that sense. And yes, these pants leave nothing to the imagination, so just keep your mind out of the gutter, okay? People do a whole lot worse for a whole lot less. Damn, that's not even the saying. Did they get some dumbass people? The saying is people do a whole lot more for a whole lot less. If you do worse for less, that's just normal. People suck for less, and I don't mean physically. Ooh, they brought back the music from the original show. I'm so excited. Who's not in debt? We're facing a recession. So we start off with a random contestant, Starla. And I assume that they wanted to put her first because she represents what most people think of the show. And it probably gets everyone wanting to watch the show because they can probably resonate with Starla and be like, yeah. I also would like that. Lots of people are facing hard times economically. I see why they did that. But again, the issue with this show is that Stala and every other contestant could go at any minute. It's exciting, but at the same time, it's very hard to develop connections when we don't see who's actually going to last and who isn't. Unlike Survivor or other reality shows when there's only a handful of contestants, we can form emotional bonds. With 456 people, it's very tough to do that. I mean, I had to... Um, I'm not getting paid at work for this. <laughs> Starla is like, I'm not getting paid at work to go film for 21 weeks to play Squid Game. I have Squid Game-a-thon, you know what I mean? But they didn't pay me, so I'm trying to win my car money. You're dreaming, you're taking a chance. What's that like to be able to pay off your house? What's that like to be able to pay off your car? Doesn't take $4.56 million, I'll tell you that, if you're waging all of your bets on a Squid Game reality competition where you have to beat 455 people to win any money, I probably would just go to work and pay off a car. You know, it's me, Starla, I'm just saying. I know these may be simple dreams, but what's that like? Yeah, I got my own dreams. They may not be much, but I got dreams too. Damn, they got... They started the show off with why is black women talk about holistic things in life? She's monologuing and shit. So, a classic first game, like the show, when that big, scary, scary, creepy girl stops singing and turns her head, everyone has to stay put and they have five minutes to make it across. And we catch up with the 400 contestants and this is the first game on Squid Game. Very faithful recreation, by the way, off the set. Very faithful recreation off the doll. Like, I gotta give them props. But again, this is Netflix's show. Like, I understand that the budget is good, but they did have the rights to this. So it's pretty good that they created it, but it was sort of expected. Although, good job. The first game is red light, green light. My strategy is not to get killed. Starla, I heard you from... My strategy is not, not to get, to get killed. killed. Starla, this, you crazy... Of course, Starla. That's like saying my strategy is like to wake up and breathe in the morning. Obviously, Starla. Obviously. Get to the end. I know how to survive. I have the best number here. Four, three, two. One go. Because I'm the one. That's some flawed logic, four, three, two. That's some crazy logic. That's like having logic. Uh, my favorite number is three, six, nine, because it's three people who 69, and I'm one of them. Like, crazy logic, bro. You're only missing the one. <laughs> I'm the one. I love people who laugh like that. <laughs> I'm the one. Early on, he's established to be the villain, and he's like, yo, man, I'm cocky. I'm going to win the series. This is what I want to do. This will be competitive because Jesus had to compete. That means I have to compete. His name is Brighton, but he's not that Brighton. Jesus had to compete in what? The carpentry competitions? I mean, comparing yourself to Jesus within the first five seconds of a show called Squid Game, the challenge is like a bridge too far, my, my friend. I, I feel like you've burnt a lot of bridges with a lot of people right there. I will get through this challenge. I swear I will. I've been practicing. Bend the useful knee that you have. And I don't know if everybody's going to have their mom in this game. So we also see a contestant called Trey, and he's with Mama Trey. Both of them signed up, and we have this early connection with them. 
I'm lucky. My mom, she was like a superstar athlete. Jada actually means the gift of knowing, and I swear there's no coincidence that my parents named me that. Uh, we also meet Jada, and I wish her last name was Pinkett Smith, because I would love to see her do Squid Game the challenge. I just see Wool getting killed every time. I might have the self-discipline that I need to learn from. That's what it is. Chase is my best friend. We've done everything together ever since high school. Okay, now we also meet Stefan and, and Chase, I guess. They're already best friends and they're going to Squid Game. And he's like, we do everything together. He's my best friend. We're both going to win. Interestingly enough, the show reminds me of war. Not that I've been to it, but I feel like in the sense that a person could be there one day and be gone the next and you just have to move on quickly is quite a reality in this show. You may move forward when the doll starts singing. You must stop moving when the doll stops singing. So the first challenge is based on skill. Squid Game has that, where the whole initial purpose is people who are in need of money play this game knowing that their life is at risk in order to win money and get out of debt. It's a very crazy, uh, distorted, horrible, but beautiful premise in the sense that we're all fighting for something and in essence how we are just more civilized. We are all these savage people in certain situations. It's just that it doesn't come out until circumstances are dire. Within friggin' 10 seconds, she's moved and she gets shot up. She'll never know how it feels to pay for her car because she's, she was like, I know how to survive. Literally the first person to die. Damn, Starla. A lot of people are getting shot between the chest and neck area. Uh, contestants have complained that they have received and been damaged due to the squibs either burning or hurting them. I don't know if this is true, I'm just saying that it was claims. And throughout every leg of the show, there has been controversy. Oh my god, she fell to the floor. Did they tell her to do that or did, did they give you like five bucks if they like, die dramatically? I wish this was the whole show, but they have 50% of people being like, oh, save me, Jesus. And they have another 50% of people being like, damn, fuck, I'm out. You see what I mean? This one girl was like, oh, me? And the other girl was like, acting career, engage. The only thing I can do at this point is so while they were talking, Stefan's best friend is doing a narration and then he gets shot up and he's dead. So now Stefan's best friend is gone, like within the first five seconds of this game. Oh, oh shit, really? Damn. One of the grandmas is like, oh shit, really? So RIP grandma, oh shit, really grandma? You, it's not like these people didn't watch Squid Game. It's not like everyone came in there blindfolded like, Squid Game, is it about tentacles? She knew what the show was. She saw the big creepy figure and was like, fuck it, I'm gonna squat until she sings again. Oh my God, it hurts so bad, I give up. We can't do it. And she gives up. Contestant 385 gives up. She squatted for no reason, couldn't hold it, and literally squatted away $4.56 million. That has gotta be the greatest squat ever. Ah, and she's crying, which means I get to have my first taste of something. R.I.P. Unknown Squatting Girl. Mm. So as I said, uh, with that next shot, you see someone reacting really shocked. It could have been pain. It could have been genuine shock. This has been an issue for them. Some of them got bruised or hurt. Actually, people gathered together to create a lawsuit. Now, I'll also talk to you about contestants who are the complete opposite later on. I can't believe it. Damn, she was already on the floor and they sh she was like, I'm done, and they still did it. Number one, 107. We live to fight another day. Okay, well, we live to fight another day is the first dude across the finish line. And like I said, I don't know who this person is. The problem is, I don't think I see him again. So it's very hard to create an emotional connection or be like, yo, that's... 
That guy, a lot of these contestants get introduced to us and then eliminated within minutes. At least with Mr. Beast, you knew all the YouTubers. Everyone had their own core audience and fan base. Having a bunch of people who are unknown go into a show and pretend to care about them winning money is a very tough thing to do. I'm just trying to say that I deserve to be on the show is what I'm trying to do apparently. <laughs> But people make it across at this point, finally. Woo! Talk about a feeling of euphoria, but one of them is my mom. I see the time on the clock. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Apparently Trey makes it across his mom, who's the ultimate athlete, is stuck behind the pack. But she does make it and we get some sense of resolution with the characters seeing that the mom actually makes it with the son. I is still worthwhile. Oh, yo, yo. They make it across, some people are eliminated, most people make it through, and then they get to the bed chambers where the beds are all stacked. This is another thing where people complained about saying the food was not nutritious enough, not served well enough, and made people sick. Other people have claimed that the food was amazing, so we're on a 50-50 scale here. Oh my god! It's right here. It really is. Uh, Stefan, the mullet man, meets another mullet man and they scream at each other being like, MULLET BROTHERS! Which is how I really think people with mullets talk to each other. So that's, that's important. What was your name? Kyle. Kyle. What's your name? Steven. Steven. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly how mullet people talk. They, they're like, we're brothers. What's your name? What? Kyle? Oh, that's a mullet name right there. Yeah, I'm Anderson. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Can, do you want to sleep with me? Uh, let's sleep together. Non-sexually. <laughs> This is like an acid trip, and I never even done acid. Let's sleep together. Not sexually, of course. Our mullets will get tangled and we'll have mullet babies. Also, the names on the show, some of, some of the names are like the most out there. Dash, Starla, y'all got names of Power Rangers and shit. That's crazy. Very, very good. Here are the results of the first game. So within the first game, it goes from 456 contestants to under 200. They eliminate a lot of people. We don't get to see most of that. And this acts like a long 10 hour YouTube video where they just have to keep cutting between things. I don't know, it's very experimental and I like where it's going, just not the execution. Player eliminated will add $10,000 to the prize. One person gets eliminated, it's another $10,000. Another person gets eliminated, now it's $20,000. Yeah, so not only can Brighton count, but he also compared himself to Jesus. Do we like him? I don't know, but he's he's a guy who really is very much about money. I gotta at least appreciate the honesty if nothing else. It's probably better to be there and just play the game how it's meant to be played as opposed to trying to create fake relationships. He's not that bright, but he's all right. Between games, there will also be tests. During these tests, you may have the opportunity to give other players an advantage to help them in the game. The new feature they introduced in Squid Game, the challenge, is tests. So between challenges, like the original Squid Game, they also have little tests like Survivor and little treats. And in these tests, you can either get rewarded or be eliminated. And a lot of these are random. Now, I don't mind the randomness of them, especially because of the test element, but if the show Squid Game is based on skill and actually using your smartness to output all of the challenges and actually survive, then it feels a bit arbitrary to do random shit in the middle of it. But they need to get rid of contestants somehow, so a lot of these challenges is just pick up the phone, you're eliminated. Or pick up the phone, eliminate someone else. I think it is cool, in theory, but it also would feel pretty unfair on some people, especially if you make it to the later rounds, how arbitrary all of this is. These tests may also be the opportunity to eliminate other players. One person has the power to eliminate another person. That changes this game. Holy shit, these contestants, uh, like you got them from rocks or something. Trey literally was like, um, you know, uh, if someone has more power than the other people, that's gonna change the whole dynamic of the show.
Do you have an idea? Who I want? I'm going to say one of the bros. There is a group of guys I am now calling the bros all hang together. So early on, we can see it's almost like a Lord of the Flies thing. And I think this is one of the best parts of the show. Without actually giving people a script or anything to do, just time, a lot of people create alliances, groups, and stereotypes that we see in movies. Like with The Breakfast Club, you have archetypes, people who are like jocks, people who are the smart bunch, and everyone clans up together to be with people they think associate with them. So originally the mom is like, man, I hate the bros, and that's what she calls them. It's the people who do fitness things and run together and talk like jocks. Random people, there's definitely the mullet heads, which is a new, I, I never even knew that was an archetype, but this is a very interesting dynamic. Always like strutting around, show how big and strong I am. Always like strutting around, everyone's bigger than my son, showing off their muscles. My son doesn't even have muscles. That's how well I raised him. I raised my son not to show off, so he doesn't have muscles. He's just skin and bone. You start thinking about like, oh, who am I sleeping next to? Do I really need you to count for me? I love myself so much. Now, apparently, the show loves him too because they keep forcing me to watch Brighton. They've interviewed him three different times, so now... It's kind of weird because you have almost 200 contestants left. The way that they chose contestants, did they choose people based on how funny their answers were, people who created narratives? Usually in reality television, they'll play up angles to create villains to be more villainous or create good people to seem more good. And I guess Brighton is the chosen villain because he loves himself and he hates other people. I know who I am. I know God made me this way. When people are like, life is so unfair. It's fair. The same shit that happened to you is the, is the same shit that happened to me it's not even remotely close to true in any sense of the word like it's probably one of the dumbest things brighton has ever said in his whole 20 30 years of living uh, i don't even know how to comprehend what the hell i just heard but now they'll interview some other people and this scene takes place while two people are doing chores they actually get a challenge and the challenge is to pick some random person to eliminate with potatoes the age attention you can give one player an advantage in the next game or you can choose one player to eliminate. They get the distinct opportunity to give someone an advantage in the next challenge or eliminate some random person. If I was in the show and I didn't know the other 200 people, I wouldn't eliminate a random person. I would pick someone I met and give them the advantage. Or I would give the person next to me the advantage if they wanted it and maybe use that later on for an alliance. Eliminating someone seems random, but as the show goes, they're just picking a random person to eliminate. Now, if these people choose to eliminate a random person, I understand it's Squid Game and it's supposed to be pretty crazy, but it is still a television show, and that person is gonna feel cheated. I don't know if they knew the rules before, but imagine if you were playing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and one of the answers, one of the four options, kicked you in the nuts. Point is, you don't actually know what's actually gonna happen, and it feels pretty random, unfortunately, without even knowing why. I guess that's life, though. One person is $10,000 mm -hmm. closer to mm -hmm. us winning the money. Mm -hmm. So that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Never have two people come out of a room more sounding like they just had sex and didn't have sex. That was fun. <laughs> and then just eliminate some random dude. It's a brown dude too. I'm just gonna spoil this. Some random brown dude who just living goes home. It is time for your first meal. Popin is like Italian food, parmigiana, arrabbiata, penne alla matriciana. Lorenzo's stupid, because he went on a show called Squid Game, and I know this man did not watch actual Squid Game, and he's like, I hope it's pizza, macaronios, and the pasta rilios. It's not, bro. It's Squid Game. It's pretty much jail, but the prize is not only getting out of jail, but winning hella money. You're not gonna get, you're gonna get the worst quality of life until you get out there. I, I don't understand how he's like, man, I watch Squid Game, yo. I listening, and basically, yo, I watch the pizzeria. I'm starved, it's not a meal, and I 100% need food. He's in line again. What the hell you be doing on the outside if this is how you're acting in here? Probably acting civilized. What? Okay, Jada, uh, let me explain something. When people are in Squid Game and it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, then they're gonna do some crazy shit. On the outside, he probably would just buy more food. That's a very redundant statement. But the point is, Lorenzo's like, no pizzeria. And then he just takes normal meals and starts eating them because he has to get his protein intake up. And I see nothing wrong with this. I don't even know why the show made so many meals that they wouldn't account for that. He also finishes off other people 
people's meal who can't eat it. So he's just doing the right thing. He's just eating food. Nothing wrong with that. So I work in private equity. I'm an asset manager. Uh, I thought that was gonna be my career path. Imagine seeing your asset manager. You just see him like in a suit and then you turn on Squid Game and you see a man in crochet everything and you're like, oh, that's Lorenzo, my asset manager. He manages $10 million of my assets. There he is sitting in crochet, stealing people's food. Well, I'm fucked. The dream is completely shattered and now I'm just attracted to creative stuff. I don't believe in the values of the corporate world anymore. There's no rules, like break free. You're an asset manager. You can't say this stuff, bro. That's like being a banker and being like, money sucks. You can't say these things. I mean, it's like a casino. There's no sense of time in here. There's no windows. There's no clock. All I know is that I feel like shit and I want to go back to sleep. Damn. So apparently it was said that people formed for up to 21 and a half weeks in these conditions. Imagine ha being in a place where there's no windows and no light. Now, I don't know if they got to go outside. I'm not sure what happened when forming ended, if they were there the whole time. But that seems like very, very harsh conditions, don't you think? I feel like a lot of people, uh, this just feels like a bigger minimum security sort of prison thing like where everyone's just doing things this, this show should be called doing time man happy birthday to me thank you all 69 Woo! 69 baby rick ton 69 in the prison best birthday ever without the family in 68 years, his family couldn't fucking get it right that he had to be with a bunch of random people in prison to actually have his best birthday. Shame on you, Rick's family. Shame on you. Do you already have a number in mind if you were going to eliminate someone? I'm not going to eliminate. Not that person? No. That would be tough to say you were the one that caused them to leave, right? So then contestant 101, mullet brother, decides to start asking people a random question, just, just at the top of his head. If you had to eliminate one person, who would it be and why? But it turns out mullet head doesn't actually know how to play this game properly. Imagine going around asking people, Hey man, if you, if you were to kill a, a woman and her waitress, a waiter boyfriend, how, how would you do it? Uh, OJ, I don't, I don't know. Please stop asking that. I don't know. First test has taken place. They chose to eliminate. <laughs> That's crazy, but player 200 goes home. And player 200 is this random brown guy who nobody knows and has no problem with him. I don't even know how they chose this. Like how on earth did they even see this man? I have no idea why they uh, vote me out. Oh man, rest in peace. Moti could have been my cousin. Appreciate you, dog. I immediately feel awful. However, it's $10,000 added to the bank. So I think in essence, like this show does a good job of actually bringing out the worst in people, which is actually not bad for reality TV. It shows that they had an option to actually give someone a boost and didn't do it because the prize money increases every time someone gets eliminated. And they felt instead of giving someone a better chance, they would rather eliminate someone and be that much closer to winning that money. Because because as they say, you know, tears fade because money wipes them away. I just made that up, but I think it's pretty good. I'm just gonna be a friendly person. See how the game unfolds. People underestimate a girl that's 4'10". They literally look down on you. I don't, I don't think it's disrespectful when people literally look down on you. I think it's actually way more disrespectful, Danny, if people look up and you're 4'10", and you're like, you're not even looking at me. Byron, talk to me. And Byron's like, yeah, uh-huh, okay, Danny. I, I guess I'll get to it when I get to it, all right. So I feel like it's actually the opposite, Danny. But uh, she seems to have a chip on her shoulder she also said she's gonna do really nice things and meet everyone but chose to eliminate someone so i don't know what to think of her <laughs> so we've come to the second challenge they faithfully recreated some of the sets they look really really good i gotta give them props there's 196 players left 2.6 million dollars on the prize everyone has to gather in groups of four different lines and here's where the show takes a turn for maybe the worst follow the staff into the game hall the second game is called Dongona. No, 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 let me, the second game is called Use Your Tongue to uh, show someone how you can do things not just on a cookie, but on a cookie. I haven't drunk enough. Before the game can begin, you four players 
must each select which shape your entire line of players will cut out. So, in actuality, Squid Game sort of randomizes this. The one time that Squid Game should have randomized this, where they had four people in lines, and what they could have done easily was put four doors in front of people without any um, the signs in them, and then the leaders could have went in the doors and been like, okay, this is what we got. Instead of doing that, Squid Game decided, we're gonna give you guys all the opportunity to hash it out with each other and decide which group takes which shape. And if you've seen Squid Game, what people have to do is cut through a cookie without breaking it. If they break it in the real Squid Game, they die. In this Squid Game, they get eliminated. The shapes range from circle, triangle, star, and umbrella. And that's in order from easiest to hardest. Nobody wants the umbrella because it's really intricate. And it seems like a very big flaw that they didn't randomize it because people just seem to be fighting over who doesn't want to take the umbrella because nobody and no team would want to actually take that willingly. That seems really stupid. I want circle. I'm taking triangle. No, I'm taking triangle. You gotta go get star. Oh, I don't mind the star. I'll take the star. I'm, I'm taking, taking triangle. triangle. Nope. So here, we have the first issue. I just find this really stupid because I feel like in terms of the show, we're just watching people argue when in reality, we do the same thing. Which team wouldn't argue? I think I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to have people reason and stuff, but there is no reward for taking on a harder challenge. So there's no incentive to do it. It's just someone's gonna get bullied into doing that, which is very stupid for the show and doesn't promote anything that is good about society. I have no no idea why they did it this way and it, it's very annoying because the first few contestants just don't agree. We gotta figure something out. Someone's gotta... I think the like circle it. is the easiest one. So I think by that logic you should go start. Guy, girl, guy, girl. <laughs> So by some bullshit logic, one of the girls is like, guy, girl, guy, girl, it just makes sense. And then the guy's like, yeah, and then decides he doesn't agree with that logic at all. And they only have two minutes to decide which one and the time is shortly running out. Yeah, we didn't agree on that. Guy, no. girl, guy, girl. No, take the umbrella. Someone's got to have the umbrella. No. The clock strikes zero and they haven't reached an agreement. So you guessed it. They all get eliminated. Big whoop. You failed to come to a unanimous decision. Bye. Eliminated. Whatever you do, do not get umbrella. So now everyone's like, yo, just don't get Umbrella, as if that wasn't the first thing that people were saying. Again, the fact is, people are probably not gonna agree on this Umbrella thing. If you have four people and everyone's well aware that one is harder than the other, why would anyone agree to that with no benefit whatsoever? It's just, it's mind boggling. It doesn't make any sense that they would do that. Don't go for the Umbrella. Do not go for the Umbrella. No Say, we gotta make it fair, we're all gonna die. It's the only way, or they're all gonna die. They needed some dash. He's talking like how I'm talking. If, if we don't do this, we're all gonna die, okay? Everyone in Squid Game's gonna fucking die. As soon as that black in it touches me, I'm dead. I'm going to the hospital, I'm gonna die. Uh. Are you guys okay with the race? No! We have a race. Oh, no! No! The next four people decide they're gonna have a race, which again, is not actually good because one, you know, they're different ages, sizes. One of them got a head start because he decided like one, two, go. And uh, so nobody's actually going to agree on that. And you know, whoop de whoop, it turns out they don't agree on who wins the race. The game is to agree, guys. Just feet. go over the umbrella and then we're all in. I'm not, I'm not going doing there. It. I was right, lying we're we're So everyone's then arguing after the race. So clearly, pragmatism doesn't work. Literal racing doesn't work. What's gonna happen? 12. 12 seconds. Just, just it pick makes it. no sense. Just, right, I'm, I'm not moving. And the episode ends. <sighs> they cocked it. Episode two. I'm getting concerned. People say die instead of eliminated. Oh, wow. And just like that, four more people get eliminated because they can't agree on something that shouldn't be up to them. Good work, Squid Game. <laughs> For whatever reason, this guy starts crying because he's the next leader and he knows he cannot make the decision. And thank you so much for crying, sir. I wasn't gonna get through the show without it. All right. Lachaim bottoms up or something. Oh, oh. Stand there and endure it, bro. Stand there. He's gonna give you a hard time, but you gotta stand there and endure it. He will give in. He will give in. You've got it. I remember I used to wet the bed a lot. Unnecessary comment. Nobody asked that. No, no reason why you should be saying that to the whole of Netflix users and people who watch. Now everyone and their mother knows you wet the bed for no reason. Why did you do that? You just made yourself a target, dude. I used to cry when I was taken away from my mom. I was very introverted. 
And then as I got older... Nobody says that. Nobody's like, hey, my name's Darren and I shit myself. Like, oh, okay, you could, you could keep that to yourself. Like, I mean, I'll still like you, even if you do shit yourself. But, like, it's unnecessary to tell me that, you know? Get it, Spencer? All right. It took a long time before I getting out of my shell and talking to people. I am extremely gullible. If someone says something to me, I'm gonna, like, believe it immediately. I'm white. Hopefully Spencer believes that. I, I have a, a bunch of extremely sarcastic siblings. I understand it some of the time, but most of the time it goes right over my head. Oh, uh, it's really sad. It seems like Spencer had a tough childhood and maybe wasn't treated the best. I feel really sad for him. But then at the same time, it's like you willingly applied to be on Squid Game, the challenge, a show in which 455 other contestants will do almost anything to get four and a half million dollars. So it's sort of like uh, putting a big target on your head when you're gullible and cry easily and wet the bed and tell people that for no reason. Like, I, I want to feel sorry for Spencer, but you, why did you come on this show if this is the type of person you are? Unless it was to learn to be stronger, in which case, I hope you do get stronger, Spencer. Don't wet that bed. Are you ready to go home? What do you want to say? Answer my question. Are you ready to go home? Yes say or no? Say what you want to say. Yes or no. no? So then Spencer is part of the leaders, and he's also put in the group with Brighton, the person who compared himself to Jesus. So this is not a good comparison matchup. And Spencer's trying to be strong. He's like, what do you want to say? And clearly, the intimidation tactic isn't working as well as Spencer thought, because he doesn't end up actually doing anything he was supposed to. It needs to be one, two, three, four. And if you're ready to go home... That's what you want to say. Bro, man up. Just man up. Let's not get shot, bro. Let's not get shot. When a dude with a fucking pigtail dread on his beard tells you to man up, it's over. It's all, that's, some, that's some Lord of the Rings type beat. Spencer, you got to man up. Take the umbrella. I want you guys to shut up real quick and listen to me for a second. Go ahead, bro. We got a minute and a half left. I'll pick a freaking door if you listen to me. I'll pick a freaking door, okay? Just listen to me, brother. I wet the bed. I shit myself every fucking day. The only thing that's wet is gonna be the bed. I'm picking circle. I wish he said that. He didn't say that at all. I'm here to help people. If I finish my cookie, I'm willing to help someone else if they allow me. I'll pick this freaking umbrella if you guys promise me. It sounds so sexual, but spit on someone else's cookie, please. Why are we still here? I mean, it's easy game when you're... I don't even know what to say. Your brothers and sisters are probably like, that's my brother, Spencer. Spit on his cookie, everyone. Lick hey, I'll it. spit on your cookie, bro. Yeah. I'm gonna spit right on your cookie. I'll come help you, okay? So Spencer is like, hey, if we do this, I need you to spit on my cookie because that's the, that's the issue. There's not enough saliva instead of the fact that the, the shape itself is very hard. So for some reason, he negotiates himself into the worst position possible and agrees to take the umbrella. Good work, Spencer. You managed to look like a baby back bitch. I don't know any other way to say it. Like, I, I feel for him, but man, that was some bad negotiating skills right there. To make matters worse, as soon as they all come to an agreement, for whatever reason, Squid Game decides to get on the trolling themselves and says this as soon as he asks for help. Players will not be permitted to assist other players. I was kind of an idiot. Kind of. Damn, Squid Game, you didn't have to say it right after. They were like, as soon as he chose, they were like, players cannot help one another or spit on each other's cookies. That's disgusting. So Spencer played himself and got the worst deal for everyone on his team. And now... We finally get to the rooms, everyone opens their cookies, and they make the most disgusting ASMR licking sounds I've ever heard in my life. Thank you, Netflix, for giving me nightmares for the next two weeks. Please enjoy people licking cookies in a very disgusting manner. Pass. It cracked. It cracked, y'all. It cracked, y'all. Some people actually do it really well. Some people say it's it cracked, y'all. <laughs> That's like a Gen Z thing. <laughs> cracked y'all. I don't know what happened. It cracked y'all. She's not even saying it to anyone, and it cracked y'all gets shot. Rest in peace, sir. It's cracked y'all. As an athlete, any slight movement, and you're done. The show actually is 10 hours long. I actually sat through all of this and cut it down because I'm a crazy human being. But in the second episode, each line has a whole sequence where they all do the cookie chipping thing and it lasts way, way longer than it should. But they finally, you know, we get to the triangle thing and Brighton 
it looks like he cracked his triangle cookie, but they do a fake out and it's the guy next to him and he gets shot. So the show clearly has established villains and heroes and wants them to succeed and has sort of plot armor. That guy was even twitching at the end. He was like dead. He's like, do they pay them more for this? Cause this is crazy. I am scared about how I don't have like a boyfriend, a serious relationship at the age of 23. All my friends are getting married. Like why? Does no one like me? Did anyone ask her a question? I zoned out and this woman started talking about how insecure she was. Is $4.56 million gonna make you less insecure? Is this what, is this why you came on the show? To flex on people? You're still gonna be insecure. You're just gonna be rich and insecure. That's why people flex, because they're insecure. People who flex want other people's validation. People who actually have it. That's why Bill Gates and Steve Jobs used to just wear normal pants, look like regular people, because they didn't need to show up. I'm just saying. I forgot what I was saying. Danny, you're four foot 11. You get, people look down on you. I'm thinking about player 200 still. I chose to hurt somebody and karma's a bitch. Yeah, so it turns out Danny actually did not make it through. She was going to play nice, be nice, and remove all her insecurities, but person that she eliminated got her back in a karmic way because she didn't get the cookie out. That sounds sexual. I had it coming. And she gets shot up, man. Damn. Can't even look us in the eyes. Mm -hmm. I hear their whispers calling me things. Idiot. It's not even a whisper. One guy's like, idiot, you stupid idiot. I told you to not ever back down in what you do. You back down, idiot. I hear whispers. You dumbass. With really loud whispers. I'm here because I want to be able to help my parents out financially. And I put that on the line. The amount of money. Your parents in serious debt with some mafia members, how are they? $4.56 million. You want to help your parents out? I don't, do they need that much money? Damn, that's a lot of money, Spencer. Also, if you are going to help your parents out, this is not how you do it. You don't put yourself in the most danger for the little reward. Like, that doesn't make any sense. You just got bullied into doing it, man. I feel sorry for you, but everyone else doesn't. My favorite part of this whole episode is the mullet guy saying the word money because he's like, money. This needle money. is in control money. of. <sighs> That's it, only one mullet man remains now. He's done for. He couldn't get that money. Player 101. I'm feeling pressure on my shoulders. Now comes the most disgusting scene in the whole episode. This guy starts having gag reflexes. Spencer, the guy who wets the bed, and he starts like gagging a while trying to do this. If that wasn't disgusting enough, I just want to bring your attention to the, the tin which was dry when they got it and people are required to lick it and put their saliva on the cracks off the biscuit so that they could tear it apart. This man put an unhealthy amount of liquid in that tin and every time I see it, I want to vomit. Oh, so close. Some of them are going to like remember me for the rest of their life as a person who ruined their chance of- God, there's so much liquid. The fuck, dude? Did you literally just like spit like a, that looks like a canyon. What the hell? Canyon, this looks like an ocean. Eliminated. Then for no reason at all, this guy starts licking it like it's a, you know, some good, good, like, you know, some juicy punani. <laughs> he's, he's licking it like, you know, he's really giving it the business, man. <laughs> to make matters worse, this dude didn't even pass. He failed at the very end, gagged, spat in things too much, and just died. They say they're games. <laughs> but they're not. God, this guy died like he was in the middle of a war movie. They say they're games. It's not funny games. It's war. His face is by the sand and stuff. They couldn't have picked a more dramatic person to die. <laughs> Your time is now up. If I ever get a chance to eliminate a player. So that is the challenge. A lot of people got eliminated. We don't know what the numbers are yet, but many people went home. Many people didn't make it. Some people did. The numbers are getting slimmer. 
This was the second challenge they did, and I think it was a good challenge because it replicated that Squid Game formula of having and needing a skill set to be able to actually get through the next round. Unfortunately for Squid Game, the challenge from then on, for some reason they make most of the challenges random. And I don't get it because Squid Game was largely a show in which you had to use your skill set to survive. It wasn't based on randomness. When we had the movie Saw, the first Saw movie was good because it allowed people to actually escape the traps if they used their thinking. The second Saw was famous or infamous for having something called a copycat killer in which the traps were not made for people to break out of and they couldn't escape it even if they succeeded. This is sort of like that where Squid Game has one element where it's random and chaotic and one element where it's skillful. And because Squid Game the challenge skips between the two, it feels like it's not actually fair anymore and it sort of lost me. If the show was random throughout and people knew they were going into a random contest to win, that would be fine. And if people knew they were going into a contest where it was only skill based, that would be fine. But to switch it up midway without actually telling anyone or having any reason to do so just seems like they ran out of ideas. I will eliminate 432. If you call me a frat boy. All right, frat boy, cool. 432 is like um, one of them lads who thinks he's still in high school. So we have, uh, what's the name? Brighton. I was going to call him Byron. He's the one, he's basically antagonizing more people, acting like a meathead, bonehead, essentially threatening people in between the show and stuff. I won't put my hands on you, cause I won't, all right? But when we get off this bitch, I might. Kind of some dumb shit, and people are beginning to hate him more and more and wanting him gone. And this contestant, 198, specifically wants him gone. So he gets an opportunity. A telephone comes out and a challenge is presented. Answer the telephone and something might happen. It could be good, it could be bad. And he thinks the telephone will be used to eliminate someone, which he wants to do for the frat boy. I don't think anyone is actually scared of him, they just all don't like him. If I get the chance, I'll just eliminate him. Hey. Turns out there's 119 people left. The prize is about 3 million at this point. We get a very single shot of the guy who won the first challenge, but nothing else is said of him. We haven't seen him since, and I, I just, like I said, it doesn't make sense to have so many contestants when 90% of them we won't see at all. Boy 101, Kyle, was in the fourth line. My fellow mullet boy, he never showed back up. I don't know about you guys, I feel a little bit sad. All my guys gone. So Stefan is clearly having some sort of mental breakdown or something. He, he He's like, my brother 101 Kyle, which is not how you introduce humans. That was his number on the shirt. You just probably say Kyle, but then he said he never showed back up. Like, I don't know if this is Southern talk or just mullet talk. My boy 101 Kyle was my bestest friend. Him and me used to party. We had friendship between each other. My best friend Chase was here with me in red light, green light. They zapped him almost first things first. Eliminated. They zapped him almost first things first. He's done for. Almost second things first. My next boy came mullet head. 101 Kyle is gone. They deciphered his number and now he has left. Man, what are you guys thinking? Gongbu. Gongbu? Yeah. That means number, best okay. friends in Korea. And if we lose, I'm losing with friends and I can handle that very easily. So, in between all of the FS, which is a group forms called the Gambu Gang, a very wholesome gang, the only part of the show I genuinely think I like. All of the members seem very nice, they don't attack other people, and they just seem to be pretty affable dudes. The Gambu Gang, I like them. Oh, wait. Oh. Oh. I like how they bring the telephone out with the, like a piece of brick and shit. Like, it's not just a telephone that they put on a table, they attach the table to the telephone. Squid Game the challenge is challenging for people, or maybe the people are challenged. I've never seen someone do that before. You're okay. No. You didn't eat, did you? Mm -mm. I'm just trying to- In between that, the mom who originally hated the bros, especially Brighton, the antagonist, goes towards him and she starts striking up a conversation. 432 is out there, he's brash. I'm not here to be everyone's mom, but I just wanted to talk to him to see if he really was who he was. I'm not here to be everyone's mom, but I could be his mommy if you know what I mean. Good work, Leanne. The people that don't like me in here have no sense of humor. 
He isn't like putting on a face. If we are ever going to play tug of war, he has the strength. What was that sigh, Leanne? My God. You're a good son. I'm You're trying. not abrasive. No, I'm not. She said he's a good son. She she started off by saying he's one of the bros and she didn't like him. Now she met him and she's like, yo, man, you a good son. But you could be an even better daddy, you know what I mean? But 120 people think I am. Well, 190. No, there's fewer than that. You're going to open your mouth wider than it is couple? Meanwhile, we see more groups forming at this time. We see people trying to get beneath other people's shells as there are less people. There's more time for intrinsic conversation, deeper conversation, people to get attached. And while this is also a good thing, it could be a bad thing because the person could go on the next round. So on one end, we see Grandma and uh, Brighton hitting it off. On one end, we see Gambu Gang. And on the other end, we see Dr. Death. I don't know what his actual name is. He's a doctor and he's teaching people how to breathe and they look really stupid when they do it. You're gonna breathe into the belly first? <gasps> Days have been crazy. Little sleep, bunch of stress. Oh, the phone's ringing. Phone's ringing. Can you imagine doing that? <gasps> Last time, uh, you know, someone did that was my cat and he had a hairball. He can answer it all he wants. Yeah. Do not hang up this call. The phone then rings and Husnain answers it the guy who doesn't like Brighton because he wants to eliminate him. And so they don't know what's going to happen. Every time you answer the phone, it's a random event. And Husnain takes the chance. He thinks it's going to be an elimination, but it's not. It's actually... You will be given a treat. <laughs> I took that big fat juicy burger and I was feeling great. So at this point, like I'm just starting to agree with Brighton because it turns out people were so hungry, they saw some fast food and everyone like vultures locked in. Jada took the sandwich. She just took that burger, ran away with it. So everyone's showing like sort of their survival mentality now and people are acting on more and more uncivilized because their needs are more dire. Disgusting. Like this is actually disgusting. Something's gonna happen and I'm gonna answer. Who's gonna get it? Gonna answer. Again, the phone rings and nobody else wants to answer it except Husnain, who answers the phone. But this time, it's not a food reward. Not even again. Oh my God. Player 198. Yes, sir. As a result of answering this call. Hello, what food you want me? Hello, that, that's my favorite part. Are now at risk of being eliminated. Must convince another player to pick up this call. Bro, if you guys drink for every time he takes a sip from his bottle, everyone would be drunk right now. But it turns out the phone is actually, it, it trolled him. If he doesn't convince someone else to answer the phone in two minutes, he gets eliminated. And now he has to think of a strategy to get someone else on this phone. And he is not a good thinker. By the way, I think this is the best test that they've had. They don't just eliminate someone randomly, which they do later on for no reason at all. They actually give the opportunity to the person to see if they can redeem themselves. They give each player a chance. If every test was like this instead of eliminating a random guy for no reason. I think I would very much more enjoy the show and I think they could use that and implement that into their next season because I think this was a really good way of doing it. When another player accepts the phone, they will be at risk of elimination. If you fail to convince another player, you will be eliminated. And that is how the episode ends. Episode three. I can't wait till it's over. We got seven episodes left. Woohoo! It's getting really hot, by the way. I've been cutting um, things in my like, knees and stuff. This is the ultimate Squid Game outfit. If I ever get on the show, I'm going to bring my own outfit. So. Do you want food? Do you, Do you want, want food? food? Do you want food? Do you want food? Do you want food? If you want food. Do you want food? That's this guy's tactic to try and get someone else on the phone. Now, Husnain, like I said, is not the best tactician. And his tactic in the two minutes is... Do you want food? And every now and again, he says, muffin. Chocolate muffin. And, and just is okay with that. Like, he thinks that's going to get someone onto the phone randomly. He could have said anything. He could have said, if someone other than me picks up the phone, we'll get an advantage in our next chat. He could have said anything, but he went with muffin, muffin. I know something's not right. Someone else picked the phone up. It's a chocolate muffin, apparently. Chocolate. Are you sure? Yeah. No! Of all people, you gonna trust him? It's chocolate muffin. It's chocolate muffin. It's chocolate muffin. It's like he's almost defeated in saying it. Like, it's chocolate muffin. 
That's what defeated him, a chocolate muffin. It's chocolate Sam, muffin. Don't. Why? Sam, come it's chocolate Sam. muffin. Sam, 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 Sam. Then some guy comes up and argues with his like friend. He's like, why? I want a chocolate muffin. But nobody's picking up the phone for a chocolate muffin and time's running out. Yeah, it's, it's chocolate real. muffin. <laughs> Have you ever seen someone so adamant on someone else getting a chocolate muffin without any explanation? Why would this dude be so adamant that he wants you to be so happy in getting a chocolate muffin? I just, I don't understand what his tactic was, but it was completely wrong. Time runs out and he's asked to pick up the phone and instantly he's eliminated. <laughs> Like I said, I think this challenge is definitely cool. I like the test in which he gets a time limit to actually prove himself and he clearly fails. So it's a fair thing to say, you go home. It's chocolate muffin. Eliminated. R.I.P. chocolate muffin. If you go, dude, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So the whole point of Stefan existing is that every episode he seems to make a new best friend and for some reason, his new best friend always goes home. I don't know if he's actually the evil genius behind Squid Game at this point, but like he started off with a friend, that guy got eliminated, then he made the mullet friend, he got eliminated. Now he's befriending Rick and I'm just very scared for Rick at this point. If I could help one person win that, it's a win for me. Wouldn't that be and, incredible? Uh, I have such passion for, for my bees. I think about my bees every day. His bitches. <laughs> I just wonder if they think about me. Sounds like a fucking pump. Who are you? I wonder if my bitches think about me. I think about them all the time. I think he's like a beekeeper or like he has a uh, passion for beekeeping. All I know is that lots of people want to lick his honey. Come. My bees love me. <laughs> yeah, boy. If I go, can you take care of my mom, please? If something happens, you want, like, yeah. to you? Yes. You're asking me to take care of your mom? Yeah. So at this, <laughs> at this point, Trey is asking other contestants if anything happens to him, can they take care of his mom? And they cut to the mom who looks like she's dead because she's got, like, a thing over her head and she's, like, done. It, they might as well have rolled off the coffin. But the way people talk about things on the show, it's as if they're actually dying. Like, Trey's just going to go home. His mom has lived way longer than him without him. And he's like, I don't know, man, if I, if I leave this earth... Can you take care of my mom? Not if she goes the next day. Trey, you're gonna have to ask everyone in this whole thing, including Chocolate Muffin, to actually take care of your mom because you don't know who's gonna be here from day to day. It's kind of a weird tactic, Trey. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no questions asked. I wanna be a safe base for people in this game. I can go to Figgy and Figgy's gonna like bring me back down. So then we get the weirdest contestant name on the show, Figgy, who's also the nicest. She just wants to help people, including Trey's mom, which is not good on this show because if you're nice, you're not going to get very far. At the moment, Brighton is winning, and Brighton, ironically, is the dumbass. All right, let's get a team. Come in. No, come with us. We need three more. They need help. Don't leave them hanging. Y'all don't want to be eliminated. Agree. <laughs> At this point, we're introduced to TJ, <laughs> who uh, seems to think this show is like a show that will make him into a star basketball player slash motivational speaker. And he takes every opportunity he can to speak like that. He speaks like a preacher who also used to have game back in the day. Real bad man. And all they're doing is deciding a lie. And he's like, don't leave them. They're going to be bad if you don't. Like, I can only imagine the basketball team. He's like, we need to win. And the game didn't even start. Like, it's not even for another two days. And they're like, TJ, please, we kicked you off the team two years ago. Can you stop? Stop turning up and screaming at us. Facing forward, facing forward. Oh my God, she's out there bawling, crying. Yeah, she is crying, isn't she? Oh my God, thank you, lady. Yes, sir. Cry more often, you know. <laughs> Control your emotions. This is not a game of sympathy at all. You know what? A Brighton says some harsh things, but is Squid Game a game of sympathy? No. If you're going into a show with 455 people who want to earn that money over you, there's only one prize, there's no consolation prize. Everyone is going to be gunning for you. I think it's, it's, it, hey, man, it's, out, man. it's like going to prison. He's a good man, I'm just trying to help him out. And if you cry and you show them that you're the weakest one, you're gonna take advantage of that. It may seem like tough love, but Brighton's just being truthful. <laughs> I'm just being drunk. <coughs> Holy shit. 
Oh man. So then it is round, round three, three, challenge three. And like I said, it goes from skill based to arbitrary. This is the middle grounds and their challenge instead of the squid game where they actually do tug of war, instead they do warships, a game in which you guess where a battleship is located. And it's a game of both strategy and randomness. Now I'll give them and concede that I guess they're trying to be sort of strategic with it, but it's now going on to the era of we're just gonna do random shit and people are just gonna be annoyed at this so they get into groups and actually whether you win or lose if someone thinks you're a full ship every contestant goes home so even though the game has a winner and loser it has sub winners and sub losers they're just trying to figure out how to get rid of these contestants as fast as possible at this point More shit. no this was gonna win it all day baby oh no who the fuck is this guy? I don't know who this guy is, but he just comes out and he's like, oh, this is gonna win it all day, baby. I didn't even know he existed before right now. Damn! But this is Brad. That's all I know about him. I know his name. Because again, there's so many contestants in the show, it actually doesn't allow me to even get introduced or acclimated to anyone else. I'm now three episodes in and I know Brad loves warships. That's my that's my information on Brad. I know he's black too, but that's just a visual cue. He might not be. He might just be really tan. I don't know. First captain to sink two of the other team ships wins. I don't know how to play this game. I know that being on the front line cannot be safe. So they have four teams do this and they do it twice. It is a very long drawn out episode and I had to skip a lot off it, but a lot of people miss, a lot of people hit, some people go home, some people don't. That's basically the essence of this challenge. The only thing worth noting is that Brighton is in the thick of it and he is in a two person ship, which means if him and someone else get hit, they go home whether they win or lose the challenge. G2 hit. Red team have hit their first ship. I know it, bro. He knew it, bro. I don't, I don't, he's, he's gone. He knew it, bro. I didn't understand that you have to actually eliminate the whole ship in order to get fully eliminated. So I just preempted that. But indeed, this motherfucker is going home. I do wish I was the captain. No disrespect to player 220, but she has no strategy. <laughs> Brighton just likes making enemies at this point. He just like wakes up to like cause violence. I want problems always. No disrespect to the other captains, but they're shit. That's why I didn't become a captain. I mean, if you wanted to be a captain, why didn't you? You just don't know how to play the game. So you probably shouldn't say much, but Brighton is already causing issues within his own team. He's a very confident, cocky, egotistical person. I appreciate him and depreciate him at the same time. We're firing, we met. We need to hit something. Hit. Yes, yes. Red missile launch. Yes. Yes. So Brad actually sinks the ship and then does the most awkward hugs combination handshake I've ever seen any man of color do ever in humanity. Yes. I think he sh I, d I just think they should retake that scene right now. It just feels awkward and I feel sorry for anyone who had to see that. So blue team gets a ship sunk, red team gets a ship sunk, and it's even. And now the craziest part happens. Brighton, the asshole, egotistical person who's been the primary person for the show, the person we all know, gets hit. He's not going home yet if they don't get his partner, but he might be going home. And I thought at this point, there's no way Brighton is going home because he's been advertised the whole show. This guy is like doing, saying the most, doing the most, being the most. And so they start playing this game and it turns out they actually stop making a comeback. They find another ship and they start hitting that ship. So it's a battle to see who actually eliminates the next guy first. D4, hit. Yes, baby. It's okay. Yes, no tears. Oh, they're crying what again. No tears? Shut up, Brighton. I like tears. Tears are my form of liquidation. Oopsie. Oopsie. Mm. It's not over yet. There's a chance that we can stay in this game if number 270 doesn't get hit. I think we have the worst Captain Miller that we could have picked possible. <laughs> oh god, imagine being like on the brink of elimination and shit talking your captain. That's crazy. Imagine going on an airplane and being like, I've seen way better from other pilots. You're a piece of shit. I could fly this plane in my sleep. You're like giving your life to your captain and simultaneously shit talking them. Gangster. 
Brighton does a lot of things, but he's going out in style. This is really exciting. This is really exciting. It really is exciting. Winning or lose, I'm gonna tell my kids about this. Mm. Then Brighton says some dumb shit, like I'm gonna tell my kids about this. And his kids would probably say, Dad, this is why you're uncool and we don't turn up to Christmas because we hate you. And why were you on Squid Game? If we miss this, that's it. If we get this, there's a good chance we win. So they hit two people in a three people ship on the red team and all they need is one person on the blue team. It seems like Brighton is making a comeback. Just then they actually hit the other guy, which means Brighton is eliminated. And my mind was blown because I genuinely thought this whole series was going to be him down to the very end. I thought that they had created an antagonist and they were going to mulk it until the very end. But it turns out the dude who he had been annoyed with for the past four episodes had left in the middle of the series. Not since the movie Psycho had I seen the main character leave very early on. Sorry for that spoiler alert, but if you haven't seen a movie that's 74 years old, you probably should. 64. How drunk am I? Eliminated. Y'all yeah! crazy. Y'all didn't say none of that shit whenever y'all was to my face, though. Brighton then has one more word to say because you can't get this guy not saying words. And he's like, y'all was saying this to my face, though. I don't know if he's like just really just brain dead or that's actually how he talks. But he has like one more thing. And I think the captains and everyone else is sad. People are unhappy. Uh, but Brighton's going home, man. People are cheering, even though their team is losing because they don't like this guy that much. The red team won the game. I really thought I was going to make it all the way. Control your emotions. This is not a game of sympathy at all. Rest in peace, Brighton. You thought you were number one. Everyone else thinks you're number two. See you later, buddy. See you in heaven, chap. As you can see, I am not dead. Squid this. So now Brad gets back home and then he does something called Squid Dance and everyone else does it too. So I know two things about Brad. He plays Battleship and then dances like a squid. That's good. That's my new person. I don't know who to look at in the series anymore. All I know is Trey and Mama Trey and now Brad Squid Dance Jones. I don't know his last name. When there was a shootout, I jumped on top of my little sister just instinctively. I didn't even think about it. People calling me idiot. You an idiot. Why'd you do that? Oh shit. So okay. Well, now we have a, a new protagonist and his name is is TJ, the one who was screaming earlier on. Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? He says he jumped on his sister when there was bullets flying and people called him an idiot, which is like, damn, do people hate your sister? Why are they hating? I thought people would be like, yo, you are a real stand up guy, but people are like, stop protecting your sister. I'm not aiming for you, bro. Get out the way, TJ. Damn, TJ's sister needs, she's gonna get all the smoke. I didn't have no explanation. I've done it so many times, I can't even count. Maybe you should move out that place, bro. Get out! Bravery is something that's a true part of who I am. That's dank. <laughs> I don't know how else to even. Someone saying the words like bravery is just who I am. Like when people say stuff like that, there's nothing, there's no other way to say it. It's a very dank thing to say. I'm a humble person. I'm a really lovely, kind, caring, beautiful, sexy individual. It's, you know, it's a bit much. Usually you shouldn't have to say it. Other people will say it for you. But since nobody else is here, TJ is like, yeah, I'm the bravest person in the world. I can climb Mount Everest in my fucking flip flops. I'll do it. Frostbite ain't shit to me. TJ is just a really charismatic, loving, brave guy. Let's go, man! TJ is a good guy, but he keeps giving us these positive affirmations. Hey, I love y'all. <laughs> okay, okay, this is my favorite part about the episode. So TJ is the captain, and uh, he's trying to eliminate the other ships, and before every time he tries to pick a ship, he'll look at them, say something like, I love y'all, and then nod, and then turn around. Hey, I love y'all every single time. It's the funniest NPC shit I've seen. Like, bro, we're in Squid Games. Let's get real. Let's let's sink this ship. Hey, listen, nobody's going today. <laughs> hey, man, I love y'all. All right. Hey, man, we gonna win. All right, yeah. All right, you know what I mean. It's just like uh, there's a bunch of commands when you press X. He just says, like, one of the lines that he's triggered. Hey, man, how you doing? Good. All right. 
Hey man, word to your moms. Hey man. You're not going home, none of y'all. I promise that, y'all. We either nail their boat or they're gonna nail us. Hey, I love y'all. All right, <laughs> he's back to it. I love y'all, man. That's why I'm sinking these ships. The end is near. See you in heaven, chap. When my teammate, he shoots the ball, he misses. I grab the rebound with no time to go. One shot to win the game. I shoot the ball. All I can think about is our kids. Ah, damn. So TJ then says a story about <laughs> how he got a basketball in the hoop. He's He acts, honestly, I thought he was like an NBA player, the way that he was talking about, because they said pro basketball player. And he, he doesn't play for the NBA. He, he plays for like the worst version of the Harlem Globetrotters, which I'm pretty sure is a group known for spinning the ball in various ways. I don't really know if this is necessarily like his his best attribute but he likens playing basketball to playing battleship the blue team has sunk two of the red team ships and are the winners thank god i'm an atheist but i i'm thinking thank you lorenzo <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> Uh, when the blue team wins the lady that comes out the front sounds like kettle on steroids she makes notes that are like, I don't know that humans can actually reach notes like that. Hold up. Wait a minute. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> Something ain't right. I don't know that humans can actually reach notes like that. Don't be the kettle calling the pot on a pot. The I think dogs are like, holy shit, who's, is that Karen again? Honestly, she just went, she went ham. And TJ is the captain and he is now feeling on top of the world. He actually says, winning this game is as good as winning an NBA championship. So all Michael Jordan needed to do was win six games of Battleship and he would have been just as full as the six championships in Chicago. It was almost like winning a championship. There it is. Thank you so much. <laughs> and then he starts crying. God damn, I would cry too if I said winning Battleship is like winning an NBA championship. Why even go to play on the NBA if I could just buy Battleships and win a championship that way? Ugh. 33 eliminated. I'm sorry. Ah, there's more crying. God damn. Oh, yeah. You probably thought I wasn't gonna do much, huh? The shots were gonna be just a few. I'm telling you, it starts off slow. By the time you're ending it, you won't even be standing. God, who is this lady and why is she even crying? I don't even know who this person is. This is the problem with the show. Five episodes in. Are you normal? Eight episodes in, you're like, who, is that guy this guy? Like, your time is over and... It was out of your control. Oh, Figgy's also crying, so this is a double. Sorry, Figgy. Yeah, who names their kid Figgy? But anyway, good, sorry, Figs. Figster. Who says five? Who, who says eight? I got five kids. Something's yelling to me. At five, I have 18 grandchildren. My heart is saying eight. Okay, so <laughs> we're on the third game of Battleship. Most, nothing here really makes sense. But we're at the end of it where this bold <laughs> captain is like, man, we can either pick five or eight. And he has like a vote and everyone picks five <laughs> except Rick. And then he says, who says eight? And only Rick says eight. And for whatever fucking reason, this guy's like, well, majority rules. And he picks eight. I don't know why. And then Rick's explanation is that he has 18 grandchildren, so he picked eight. <laughs> That's not even a realistic thing to say. That's not, 18 grandchildren and the number eight are not the same. Also, someone in your family's been fucking way too much. Just sort that out. No wonder you need $4.56 million. That's grocery money for the week. Damn it, Brick. Red team, prepare for impact. Turns out Rick actually won. So I, be, like it's beyond me why this dude picked eight still. I don't know if he was counting how many years old everyone was there and then like Rick just outweighed everyone cause he's like 400. But there's no reason he should have picked eight but he did and they won. So all of the blue teams seem to have won except Brad's team who did the squid dance. Doc, you're my hero. My kids are gonna love this. This is my biggest moment in squid game. I helped. Very cute moment with Rick, the only person I actually like in this thing. He's he just wants to help. Let me in! 
He just wants to be somewhere out of the retirement home, I guess. He just wants to do some shit. I feel like all the old people should have their own squid game, and whoever wins gets the most jello for that month. Do it. Oh my god! Yo! More people are eliminated. Dash is absolutely shocked that people still get eliminated in the series called Squid Game. He's like, oh my god! For whatever reason, doesn't understand the concept of this game, even though he's more than halfway through it. They then bring out a podium, and people actually have to vote off the next person. And I think a majority rules thing is cool. It's like the survivor thing, where they vote people off at the end. I'm not opposed to this. I think this is a decent test. Good job! Oh, get away from that thing. Oh, damn, that's how the episode ends? Well, what a weird way to end the episode. And we start with episode 4 out of 10. Episode 4. At least this episode is shorter. Woo! The three players with the most votes will be eliminated immediately. The players with the... with the... How she sound like? The players with the most votes will get eliminated immediately. Like, not only do you get eliminated, but you get sassed out as well. That's crazy. They actually make the game interesting in which if you vote for a different player, their name gets shown on top of the screen. So essentially, the first person to vote is going to have a target on their head because everybody know, will know who they're voting for. And every time someone changes the person, which is a very interesting way to play the game. And I wish they had more of these very well thought out challenges. Sometimes it's just very arbitrary. And other times it seems like, oh, they really thought about this. This is one of those times. I think it is best if there's a three person tie and we all agree who those three people are. No. no way. That's one of the stupidest ideas I've ever heard, Doc. Are you doctor of stupid? That's not actually how that's gonna work. I've been told that, you know, I do come across as um, intimidating. I do come across as intimidating. We then meet Cheney in episode four, and she's a math teacher, and she is abrasive. She's, she, she's just, she's Cheney, man. Like, I have a math degree. I have a master's degree. So not only am I beautiful, but I'm also intelligent. Me, I don't know. PhD, <laughs> cancer <laughs> biology scientist. Oh, I work in a biotech company. We make COVID-19 testing kits. Oh. Stuff like that. You know, men. Oh, shit. Here we go again. They don't typically like, you know, beautiful, smart women. They kind of like beautiful dimbo women, but- I like ugly fat women. Am I allowed to say that? Shit, I don't even know. Like, I can't even tell you that. I just want to not say what Chaney says. Whatever Chaney is, I don't like that. I had four shots. I have the entire package. My biggest weakness is- What is it with the show and people being overconfident? TJ came out and said he's the bravest human in all of- he said he took down Genghis Khan with his bare hands and shit. This woman is like, I'm so smart and sexy, Bill Gates would bow down to me. Fucking Brighton was like, I can dunk on LeBron James at will. Everyone here came with such an attitude that they were like, I am gonna win Squid Game, no doubt. And all of them seem to be going home. What happened to just people being like, I understand this is a tough competition and I don't wanna get ahead of myself. Is, is there no more people like that anymore? I feel like I'd be that kind of person. The vote is about to begin. Oh. oh my god. Okay, so this is my favorite part from this episode. One dude, for no reason, guy number 374, goes around and starts telling people, I just don't want to be here anymore. I would, I'd, I'd like to get voted off. Woo! And for, for like, you know, everybody's sake, everyone's like, oh, I'll, I'll help you out then, 374. And they do it, and then he's like, damn it, I thought that plan would work. I thought if I said I wanted to be voted out, everyone would be like, no, you're staying in. No way you're getting voted out. No, God, please, no, no! What kind of weird reverse psychology is that? Bro, that's so stupid. One of my strategies has been to project weakness in some situations, so, you know, I'm going around, I'm telling people that I'm a little unhappy, I kind of want to go home in some ways, so... How does that... What kind of bullshit stra... <sighs> I want to go home. I just, I wish there was a way to send me home. Well, there is, buddy. It's actually called a vote out. I'm going to make your wildest dreams come true. You can thank me later. I think some people think I might want to leave. What, well, duh. What bullshit ass strategy, bro? You're so stupid. <laughs> come on, man. Trey's mom hates Lorenzo. I don't know why. I guess Lorenzo is just a shady person and he eats everyone's food. And then Lorenzo does not take kindly to anyone not liking him and is petty back to the mom. Oh my God. 
<laughs> the doctor also gets hated on. The dude who made people breathe very stupidly. People just are like, bro, you're the worst doctor. Basically, that dude is like TJ, but in doctor form. He thinks he knows what to do, but I feel like he made himself a target because he was way too busy talking and trying to be pragmatic about things. And this is not a group of smart people. You're next to a guy who said he wanted to go home and another guy who eats everyone's food. Like, this is not the brightest cream of crop right now, Doc. I feel like you should have been saying less and doing more. <gasps> yes, I am serious. Dead serious. The black lady talks to herself for some reason. You get it? If you don't get it, forget about it. Nobody else was even asking a question, but she now wages war on the doctor. Doctor Doom then wages war back on her, and she's like, oh, me? <laughs> Surprise. The first player eliminated is your three. Who do you guys think the first player is? I don't know who the first player is. It's the guy who said he wanted to go home. Three, seventy-four. I didn't know what his name is because he's never talked in the whole show, so I just called him Double Chin Jim. And uh, he, he invented the strategy, I want to go home. So, so he went home, I guess. I don't, I just, the stupid, honestly, genuinely, this guy out of the four, five, six people is the dumbest one. <laughs> like, that strategy is the worst. Three, 30. Oh, Doctor goes home as well. And unfortunately, my boy Lorenzo, the guy who steals people's food, has a weird accent and dresses in crochet and is an asset manager, goes home. Damn. This guy was silently becoming a favorite of mine. I think people are definitely sheep. I oh, I thought he said people are shit. He said they're sheep, but it's his accent. I thought he was like, I think people are shit. They fuck people. I going home to my pizza and my crochet. Honestly, he could voice Mario in the next movie. Because I was on the board, because she called me. Otherwise, no one would have done that and I would have been still in the game. I don't blame them. <laughs> so Lorenzo, rest in peace. He uh, he fought with old woman and wore crochet. That's some baller. I blame her. Oh shit. <laughs> okay. Oh, and we have yeah, more crying. Fine. This is uh, things are getting real in the series now. Things are getting real. But they're getting real nice for me because I've had eight shots. So I put my vote on the one who went home first. Because I could have swore I saw 179 being put in. I see it. For me? I'm just playing that. Then Dash also gets like uh, incriminated. He People think like he voted for a certain person. And he's like, no, no, me. I would never do that. Immediately when they cut to the side screen where they do the interviews, he's like, I totally did that. Dash is not gonna last very long if he's snitching on himself. But I but I really like Dash now. Bro, don't play, play with me. I'm I would not here. do that to you. I voted for Cheney, but I'm totally <laughs> lying to these people and I'm saying that. <laughs> he even did the thing where it was like, hey, hey, don't tell anyone. I fully voted for her. She, I don't as if anyone like would say anything. This guy is hilarious. If Lorenzo and Dash fuse, they'd make Dorenzo. People were quite surprised that I have um, some rather large tattoos. Uh, it's also established that Rick has tattoos, which he doesn't show anyone, and we never know if any of this is true. So this could be a load of bullshit that's just here. Rick says he has a whole tattoo of his whole life story on the back of his ass or something. I don't really know where it is, but he doesn't show us anything. So I don't know if this is just made up. I don't, I don't know who's real or who's fake at this point. Like between some of the stories people say, I feel like some of these people is lying. I don't know, I like Rick, but like his whole life story, I would take his, uh, he'd need to be like two people. I have a large life-size orchid flower for every grandchild with their initials in it. And I hope to put a few more. So he's like little Wayne. Oh, oh, little Wayne, he's just too good. So guess who's saying choosing you would have been more strategical? Dash. Seeing all these male dominant alliances rubs me the wrong way. Uh, halfway through the show, we get this weird, like, sort of like s sexism sort of thing going on. You know, men. I don't understand what it is. Cause Squid Game is at this, like up until this point had no, a reason to even portray any character as like sexist, this or that. You know, men. The challenges are not strength-based. You know, men. They're 
not specific to male or female or any different trait and for whatever reason this lady's like seeing males bond really makes me sick you know men i, I just don't understand where it came from and it like it's, it's it's annoying to say the least being married to a woman a strong woman we deal with this every day you know men when i see this here it just really just well, you deal with strong male what do you do what i don't get why in squid game she chose to say this like there hasn't been anything to suggest that the captains who won the first battleship were a woman it's it's not it hasn't been that way at this point i feel like are close to equal number of both and it just seems like it came out of left field i think it's just so unnecessary if like a male character came on the show if rick was like i hate these women on the show it would be like whoa rick what the fuck was that so it's at this in the same vein like where's this coming from man it pisses me off um, this is not what we're here for. Look at what we have here. Flipped. So, at the same time, Rick and his pretty much adopted now son, Stefan, go into the back room and they it's not what you think. get two envelopes. One's a crip and one's a blood. And they have to pound each other until one of them is on top. I knew it! I knew it! I'm talking about a game, but uh, that's the best way I can describe that. Oh, you have to hit it. I missed. Sometimes it's not always strength. It's more like maybe. It's the motion of the ocean. Like that. Oh, oh wow. Rick, Rick says it's not about how big it is. It's about how you use it. And Stefan's like, oh, okay, I got you. Attention players. Player 243, you have lost Dutchie. And now they think that one of them is going to be eliminated because Stefan actually lost and Rick thought he was just teaching him. And every everything's a tense moment because these two have had like the, almost a father-son bond what the heck is that it's a candy bar it's a what candy bar <laughs> but instead of one of them going home it's just a candy bar given to rick the winner and they are pleasantly surprised and happy to be father and son again <clears throat> you are something else gramps just call me the old man i call my dad old man <laughs> Then we have a weird exchange of <laughs> Stefan being like, ah, you had me there, Gramps, and he's like, call me old man. And like, without any hesitation, Stefan's like, oh, I call my dad that, so you're not actually my family. You're just an old fucking man. I call you an old bag, bitch. This is like a weird moment there, but uh, in between that, we have that lady who uh, is annoyed that men exist, and she starts crying just at the thought of guys, I guess. You know, men. <laughs> oh, it's the other one crying. I was like, I wonder if my kid asking for me. Then you feel guilty for signing up for this <laughs> shit and leaving your kid. I'll tell you what, you couldn't pay me $10 million. You couldn't pay me $100 million to leave my kid. Fuck it, you couldn't pay me a billion dollars. Once I have my kid, as that. There's no amount of money that I would go to be on Squid Game to avoid raising my kid. I'll just be honest. I'm not saying you're a bad mother. I'm just saying I'm a good drinker. Mm. I'm doing it for her. I think they're rooting for us. I think, I think they are. Oh, she's crying again in the interview. So this is way later, but she still found the same emotion. That's crazy. And I still found the same drink. Nice. We were actually on the brink of getting a divorce. Mm. What? God damn, who even says that in a show? This is as out of, like, out of pocket as the dude who just randomly said he wet the bed. Like, I don't even, why'd you even? Is $4.56 million gonna fix your relationship? It might, it honestly, it might, but not actually. Like, then he's just a gold digger. Mm. He's a man digger. That doesn't sound right. He's a sugar daddy. He's a sugar baby. He's a... He's a dad handler. He's a pan dad. He's a money grubbing man. This is a second dormitory elimination test. <sighs> At this stage, they start having another test and each of the boxes contain a pop-up and the pop-up could be anything from an advantage to getting to eliminate players. And this is the part that pissed me off the most. <laughs> Keen observers will notice I was actually checking how long the episode lasted because I was done. Honestly, the show has like, I watched a few episodes and I, w I was over it, but I had to be under it because this, we got more seasons, man. Oh, she's crying again. Woohoo! Woohoo! 
Yes, sir. Look, man, I get that the show is emotionally taxing. I consider that. But at the same time, we're on 11 shots and almost on the second half of the show. I don't know if I'm going to survive. <laughs> your box will contain either the power to eliminate other players or your immediate elimination. <laughs> Kill or be killed, am I right? We're on episode five. We're halfway there almost. I want to watch actual Squid Game is what I call this episode because I would much rather do that. Player 183. You must pick two players to eliminate. So the first dude gets to pick two dudes to eliminate. I've never seen him before. Never see him again, but he eliminates two dudes. Zero, two, six. Just some random girl, some ran- For no reason, this poor girl has to go home. Sorry, 026. 141. And then he eliminates fucking Dash. He eliminates DoorDash, my favorite human in this whole thing. He eliminates the guy, man. Dash could have snitched on everyone, including himself. Stupid, I'm not gonna let you get the chance. How are you gonna do that? He even enunciated it. One, four, one. Damn, I got my boy Dash. Who names their kid Dash, anyway? Nothing I have said is a lie. There is a four person alliance. 183, 182, 179. 176. Get out of here, man. As Dash leaves the scene, he snitches on everyone because that's what he does. Damn, he does the snitch and then dashes. And now he knows that there's an alliance. He gave it away to everyone else who's still there. Player 141, you have been eliminated. Let's all laugh with the really cool guy, huh? <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> The man who I don't know if he's white or Asian gets a box and uh, unfortunately Player 375 You have been eliminated Yeah, really sad man, I wanted him to go farther Oh, some girl cries about it and I drink more because she does Wee 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 A wee 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 You must pick one player to eliminate uh, I'm gonna be eliminating player number 176 Oh. Another random guy gets eliminated for almost no reason. You have received an advantage in the next game. Then player 130 opens his box and gets an advantage, which is cool. It's actually the best thing because he doesn't have to eliminate a player. He can feel good about himself and he is feeling psyched. <laughs> oh, brother. Oh, shit. She's crying. God damn, I didn't even have time to breathe though. Yeah, well, things are getting spicy. Wee 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 wee. I'm missing the whole table at this point. I am seeing triple. Yo, gabba gabba. He's making me cry because it's just like you didn't have to volunteer your ass to go up there. <sighs> So then the person who hates every guy in existence gets the ultimate trial and tribulation. She gets to eliminate a total of three people. How did they think that was okay to even put it in the game? Now, do you think she'll eliminate a girl with three guys? Let's see. Pick three players to eliminate. <sighs> One, three, zero. You know, me and- The first person she eliminates, like an absolute dickhead, is the dude who gets an advantage. The game is broken! I've seen some cold shit before, but I've seen ice less cold than this. This is the actual most snake move I've seen since Kevin Durant moved to the Warriors to win even more championships. God damn, that was the worst thing. But he had the advantage. It's an evil world we live in. Yeah, it was so bad that even this white dude was like, but he had the advantage. Could they do that? He's like shell-shocked for the homie. Damn. But he had the advantage. Yeah, he had, he had the advantage, but nobody knew his name. Rest in peace, player 130. Two, four, three. Then they eliminate, for no reason at all, the two contestants who we were probably the most fond of. And I know this is probably hurting you to see, but who do you think this number is? Damn. This is terrible. You know, me and- Yeah, that's right. 
It's Stefan, the other mullet brother. And for no reason at all, this man gets eliminated. Now, I gotta say, a lot of people on the show had some ulterior motives. Stefan could barely put words together. He was not a threat to anyone besides himself. Me personally, I wouldn't take this level of disrespect. Sorry, Steve. Rest in peace, other uh, mullet man. There's no more mullet men now. I didn't even know she for real knew who I was. I that's that's how crazy it is. He's like, I don't even know for real if she knew who I is, bro. I don't know if she know the real person behind the mullet. Damn, he's gone. I thought I was doing a good job staying out of the... So she has one more person to eliminate. Could be anyone. Guy, girl, or actual guy. TJ, EJ, BJ, CJ. I don't know. Who does she eliminate? I don't know. She might be a dick because she just eliminated Rick. Spotlight, I'm floored. My heart is in my shoe right now. I don't know. Two, three, two. Nobody says that. No person says that. You disrespect me. You disrespect my family. You call us stinky poopy babies. My heart is in my shoe right now. Nobody says that. That's some alien type beat. That's some E.T. would understand. My heart is in my shoe right now. My ass is on my chest. I'm feeling like a skull. I'm feeling like skull candy headphones. My my breath is on my my eyebrows right now. I'm really feeling like my tongue is in my nose at this point. Stefan, get some better words, bro. Two, three, two. <gasps> Why? You know, me and my time has come. Uh, he, Rick gets the a hug from literally the a dude who looks like this sad face emoji, like the shocked, sad, disappointed face guy, and he has to leave. So for no reason at all, this woman saw both Stefan and Rick as a threat to her, and they were part of the Gambu gang, a gang that was wholesome, made for men, also had a woman in it, and the gang stood for some friendship bros type shit. This, this is the actual worst thing I've seen all series. I could, I like a lot of things I could let slide, but these two dudes just were chilling. Oh, so sorry, His next tattoo gonna be a teardrop, bro. He's gonna, he, he's gonna be murder on his mind, man. So, we obviously lost our wisdom. Yep. Right. We lost. We lost Quadzilla. Yeah. Um, anybody have any ideas? You think what happened? Yeah. You, people got eliminated by that girl. For some reason, the rest of the Gambu gang go, gets in a, like a meeting, and the dude's like, "What the hell just happened out there?" As if it's a war. Uh, it turns out it was just uh, uh, Felicia. So I don't care what kind of hate or targets I have right now. I think majority of people will be thankful that I did what I did. She, she just she just got every she just hates your gang. She hates gangs and especially friendship ones. So that's what happened. Now there are three left in the Gambu gang. It's bald man who looks like he's in GTA 4. Other dude who I've never seen and the cool guy who is also someone I don't really know much about but that's all that's left. That girl made a savage brutal move. Taking the kid out with the advantage. Also a great move. But now we know she's a player. My advice we don't talk to any. So so the dude says stop talking to anyone. I don't think Rick ever interacted with anyone besides his fake son Stefan in the show, but okay. I mean, I honestly thought that the old lady and Rick would interact at some point. But they don't seem to have interacted either. It turns out there's 63 players left. I have 12 shots in me and there's too many episodes. Winning would completely change my life 360. Jada then says winning would change her life 360, which just goes to show the combined IQ of the show is like 100. 360 would mean it revolves around a full circle and comes back to where it is, Jada. If you wanted your life to change, it would do a 180. But all right, I guess we're at that level of intelligence at this point in the show. It's just random people eliminating other people till just random people survive. Anyone who actually was a threat has been eliminated. Now it's all the bottom feeders. It's gonna get really interesting if we keep going here, you guys. Yup. And then there are only gonna be people left that we care about. It's gonna be awful. So Leanne actually has a very uh, intrinsic thought that was, that was deep. She said that the deeper we go into the series, the more we're gonna care about people and it's gonna be harder to eliminate people because of our care for them. And it sucks. And she just stumbled onto the point of the Squid Game thing. Like, this is what Squid Game should have focused on. And if I was doing the show and I was asked to produce it, I would focus more on the relationships as time went on rather than the challenges themselves because it's really interesting to see how the dynamic evolves once there are less people left on the show and what people do. Do they choose friends 
or do they choose to backstab them? And does money rule or reign over people's actual values? It's an important thing. I wish, I think this is what the actual Squid Game was trying to do, but the challenge sort of dips and leaves that in the dust. I can work in groups, but I don't prefer it. I'm not willing. I'm trying to think of how to say screw people over without using the fuck sign. Like this one, this one. Oh, and if you don't, you just go, peace out, bitch. You know, I don't I actually don't know anything about sign language, but uh, Jackie is the next contestant. And uh, man, it's a tie between Felicia and her for which one I like less. Gosh, these people sometimes. I like Rick a lot. Brighton was down in the middle. The mom, I like her. Trey's fine. Jackie and Felicia, man. Or Felicity, whatever her name is. No. The treat is a picnic. <laughs> You must now choose someone to share your picnic with. Has that ever worked? Have you guys ever watched the series? Come on, man. Has a picnic ever, you must choose a partner to have a picnic with? Does it not sound like a setup? In Squid Game, at this point, after knowing that if you pair up with someone that you like, they're probably gonna get eliminated, would you not pick someone you don't like so you could eliminate them? This is not a work together game. This is a game of, I'm not gonna work together. The person who's next to me is against me. But for some reason, nobody thinks that. And everyone thinks to go on a picnic with themselves and their best friend. So everyone chooses their best friend and is absolutely bombarded when they find marbles, which means they have to play each other in order to send one of them home. Stop! It's a very cool move uh, in Squid Game, but people somehow haven't watched the show and forgot about it. Doing some searching. Before anyone else, the mom and uh, son realized that they found the marbles, and uh, the only way she can win this competition is by taking his marbles, so to speak. What do you mean by that? And he starts crying, and I start downing another Hennessy. I see those marbles and my heart sinks. Either I am going to eliminate my own mother or she is going to eliminate me. Two, two, no, 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 no. You're crying. We don't do that here. Control your emotions. This is not a game of sympathy at all. Woo, I didn't even finish this one. Oh, there's so much crying right now. Oh, there's, there's just so many crying. Favor oh. is starting to cry. I am wondering if he's gonna stay this emotional. Why did they even put this in the series? Who the hell is Favor and who is this goal? Uh, talk to me like I know Favor is crying and I think that's a weakness. Who are you and who is he? I don't know you guys. I know Rick, Stefan, uh, Trey, Mama Trey. I don't know her name. And every crying person. If he's gonna stay this emotional throughout the game, if that's maybe an advantage for me. So, uh, what are you thinking? I would be in a severe disadvantage if we did something involving throwing. Ah, uh, yes, my favorite and also worst part of this episode is Trippy Red and uh, whoever this guy is arguing over the fact that they can't actually decide on what game to do to eliminate each other. You see, the point of the marbles is that you play any game you choose and decide on to eliminate the other person. It could be as easy as, I got more marbles than you, bitch, which is my game of choice. Basically, I take the marbles and say whoever has the most marbles wins. But you can do any game you want. The thing is, you do have to decide on a game mutually to be able to play it. And Trippy Red and this guy is just not getting past that. Maybe we can go offhand, where I go left hand, you go to keep, to keep it as somewhat of a skill to make it fair because- I don't think that makes it fair, dude. Cause how, how? So the guy's like, hey man, um, I'll throw left-handed, you throw right-handed, we'll draw a circle. And she's like, I, I can't throw. I don't even know what that skill is. I don't even do that. And she just rejects every idea he has. And he's like, I'm not gonna randomize it because I feel like it should be skill-based. And this basically serves as the argument for the whole Squid Game show. It's like, is it skill-based or is it random? It can't be both. And I feel like this should serve as the whole purpose. Like you need to pick a lane, Squid Game. You have to be somewhat reasonable. Oh man, I love you. <laughs> oh my God, is this woman just she's crying still? Damn, right. another one? Who am I, DJ Khaled? What are you gonna cry about? Why do you want to win? I can't afford to retire. You know, and also somebody close to me has had some health issues. I think I'd probably end up giving a donation. So, um, Felicia and uh, other Felicia are crying. And now we have ah, the scene, the greatest scene of all time. Jackie, the person who 
wanted to go on the show so she could teach people sign language, meets another guy who also does sign language, and then proceeds to call him Ick. Yep. Oh. You know I'm deaf. For me, it's about representation. I want to make my community proud, and I've never seen anyone represented me. Someone who's deaf, someone who uses sign language. You've never seen anyone use sign language? Or deaf? Ever? Maybe you're blind and not deaf. That one, there was a violation. Personally, I wouldn't have it. Are you kidding me? All right, just look up The Apprentice next time you're on the Google and, and look at the person who won the Oscar for playing a deaf person. Name's Marlene. You, you should look that up if you ever want representation. But I, I'm assuming she was meaning that not many people were represented in that community, but that's a false statement. Anyway, the guy's like, yeah, I'm also deaf. Also uses their voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just being able to oh you can tell he doesn't care he said he said whenever you say three of the same thing yeah 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 yeah, yeah. uh-huh uh-huh uh -huh. okay 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 it's like i'm not listening i just want to get past this i want to skip the dialogue <laughs> in a cutscene right now but i'm deaf i've seen your hearing aids yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. why have you not taught me any sign language i've talked to you you haven't it goes both ways too motherfucker he didn't say he wanted to teach people at what point you seriously are deaf man at what point did this guy say i would like to also teach my community she was she literally came out to be like i'm gonna teach my community and give them representation by teaching everyone and he was like hey, you didn't teach me and she's like well you didn't teach me tim what kind of random ass shit is that that's a weird logic if you'd come out to me and gone like that, I'd have gone. That's not my job to come up to you. Damn, it's not even her job. She's teaching people, but it's also not her job. I'm trying to teach the world that people can do anything with sign language, except people who actually do it back. Fuck you, Tim, and all these old people. I'd rather do sign language to people who don't know it. That way, I can teach them weird signs and make them believe it's actual sign language. Are you playing the sympathy card here? Sympathy card? Yeah. Tim. No, 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 no. Tim, no. what are you doing? No, no, because you've not mentioned this. You I hate the way she talks. <laughs> I'm too drunk to hide this. I hate the way she talks, man. I hate the, Tim, what are you doing? He's not like an antagonistic person. Like, she's acting like he came out from a street with a hood, ready to, like, you know, to wage war on her. Tim, please, no. She even, she's like, oh, Tim. She's acting like a mom to this dude. Not indicated at any point Tim, that we're you not know that. Friends. You saved this for this moment. I know you're Tim, getting... that's really icky. Oh, no, Tim. Right. Tim, that's really icky, Tim. You're being really ick, Tim. You boomer. Tim, I'm gonna teach you a sign language sign that I that I'd learned, and this one's just for you, Tim. <laughs> Fuck you, Tim. I'm gonna beat you at marbles. Damn. I've never seen someone act so Gen Z before. At such a weird interval of time. I had to go through crazy tribulations. So my family does not trust me in my decision by, you know, being in the military or. Uh, so we finally get a taste of new character Mai and also of uh, uh, Jada, who's back and she's crying. So I should be drinking and I think I need a break. But anyway, you can let it out. <laughs> and it's hard. Out. It's yeah. hard. It's hard. It's hard. Why'd you make us do this? Damn, Brad, Brad hit over with it. Why'd you make us do this? Some people really have it tough, like Mai's reasoning, her backstory, her um, her whole reason for playing this is, is way different to other people's. But it's sort of like American Idol in that, are we supposed to feel more sorry depending on the story? Like, am I supposed to feel like Mai should win it over someone else, even though we should all have an equal chance as opposed to someone who's just like, I don't necessarily need the money, I just want it. It's 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 what reality TV shows do very often. They pull on your heartstrings and they make you more attached by making the story more um, dire. So it's just something worth noting. It's not like a bad thing. It's just something that they do pretty often. I didn't even know Brad died, man. Oh, he squid danced to death. Hey, hey, hey. You have eight minutes. Yep, it's gonna be a long eight minutes. So Trippy Red and that guy still can't figure out what to do. They're not doing anything. And the mom and son play each other. And they're like, look, no holding back. The winner takes all. The game was whoever has more marbles wins. Does that mean I win? I guess so. Damn, 
that old guy lost. Uh, that lady beat him, the sign language lady. I'm forgetting the all their names right now. No. No. Okay. I'm sorry, Jada. I love you, Jada. Jada loses to Mai, and uh, there's just a bunch of scenes playing arbitrary marble games without actually seeing who wins. We're just seeing the end result. Everybody is going to be so proud of you. At this point, people start saying the word proud a lot in the series. Like, people are really proud of you, or proud of how you're playing this game. Are people really proud of how you play Squid Game, a game that's arbitrary and doesn't actually act on any skill set? Is that a thing you could come home and tell your family? I played Squid Game and came 18th. Oh, I'm so proud of you, Daniel. Uh, you wasted 21 weeks of your life. Wow. Normally you waste more time than that, but that's pretty good. Shoot, shoot. Attention players. The game is now over. How else we solve this? I was the first. And the game ends without Trippy Red and the guy actually figuring out what to do. Yeah, I don't know her name. I call her Trippy Red. I was the first to make it in. I'm not doing that. Absolutely not. Dylan! You I think it's fair if I if I win after this. No, I'm not I'm not just gonna give you the win. Man, Trippy Red and Dylan both go out in a heap of glory because they can't decide what to actually do and they have effectively ruined a friendship and lost 4.5 million dollars. That is a bad day to be a friend of either of those two. <laughs> ah, more crying. Crying. Wee. Got a bitch crying. Got a bitch crying. So one of them wins and one of them loses. I forget who. I think Felicia goes home. Bye, Felicia. And the other Felicia stays. Mm. I'll loan her name. Glad to see you guys. <laughs> Full is now crying. Uh, it's 21 shots. One. 21 shots. Going to my head. Going me. I see her in me and she sees me in her. TJ says the words, he sees my in him and he sees himself in my, which is a big red flag to her husband. Sounds like he's about to do some debauchery. Oh. And we're down to 21, 31 players. I'm a little too drunk. Players must pick one captain. Do y'all trust me enough to lead y'all? Yeah, he won't do yeah. I trust you, TJ. He's not my captain. Ooh, sounds like a MAGA thing to say. But they elect a captain. And TJ is the captain because he's the captain of the football slash basketball slash globetrotter fucking battleship team. Choose your friends wisely. Choose your friends wisely. You normally say that when someone's going to stab you in the back. Attack the moment because that's all we got is the moment. TJ then gives everyone a speech that nobody cares about. Attack the moment. Lead. Proceed. Do weed. And then breathe. <sighs> So let's let's come together and just pray, y'all. Like for real. Like just this quick a quick prayer. Then he gets everyone to pray, even if they're atheists. Let's pray, y'all. Dear God, and I mean God, and only the one and only God, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Please save me and get me that 4.56 million TJ out. Quick eight-second prayer and, and Quick eight second pray. Lord help me, Lord have mercy on your souls, cause I'm about to fill your holes. TJ out. Only 20 players will pass to the next game. Player 182, as captain you will automatically pass to the next game. So, the next test is that it's almost like a link chain, and each person picks another person to uh, get them through the next round. And there's 32 players, and 12 of them don't make it. So, each player picks someone they want to make to the next round. And TJ already is to, through to the next round because he's their captain. Please pick one ally to save from elimination. I pick player 287. He picks Mai, even though Mai says that she doesn't believe him and doesn't think he has a pure heart. He says, I do have a pure heart, and he picks her. And now she sees him in her too. Nice. Ah, oh, she's crying, God damn it. Please pick one ally to join you in the next game. I know she's gonna pick one of the girls. Player 286. 
Everyone has a goal power thing and thinks the goals are all gonna pick each other in order. And she does the right thing by picking the girl with the great of her mind. She picks Chad. It's the first time I think the men have felt threatened by the women in this whole competition. And it feels really good to be like, we can make our own alliances too. We Has Squid Game ever been a thing in which men and women have not got along? Like, I don't understand why the second half of Squid Game is so dependent on men versus women. I don't understand what this sudden shift is because the whole start of the like the whole first four episodes everyone worked together without saying or mentioning any of this but for some reason now it's become a point of emphasis that everyone needs to have the goals stick together and the guys are not saying we need to stick together and I don't think that's even true because the girls are picking guys the guys are picking girls it just seems like a very random stupid thing to just shoehorn in and I don't know whose idea it was to be like girl power all of a sudden but everyone had the chance to like do whatever they wanted throughout the series it wasn't a dominated by male or female thing so it, it's just like a random thing too we can do what we want as well and we have control over this competition as well holy crap episode seven i'm drunk af i thought i would be and i am <laughs> 11 players not picked at the end of this test of allegiance will be eliminated player 429 yes wait who's that that's trey Woo! Oh no, it's not Trey. It's some other guy. Zero one. Woo! It's Trey. Oh, it actually is. Nice. Awesome. Player two six nine. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's that guy. Not that guy. It's the meme face crying dude. Like his face default face is concern, and then his other emote is cry. He should be in the movie Inside Out. He'd be really good. Like they don't even need to animate his face. So he just uses live action face. <laughs> I'm sorry for anything I say past this point. Don't blame me, blame the alcohol. Player zero, three, one. The last person they pick is the last member from Kambu Gang. And unfortunately, everyone else goes home, including the bald dude who was like, what the hell was that? What the hell was that? 20 players are left. You have shown me actions. It's more powerful than words. But today you have proven you got my back. Oh, I just didn't drink for a second, but now I'm gonna drink again. Woo! 25. Toby number. Toby. In front of you is a claw machine containing a bear for each of you. These will decide the order you will play in the next game. Oh, the next challenge is a 50-50 game where you can stand on a platform and there are about 10 platforms. If you catch a low number, you have to jump all of the platforms. The person with the highest number probably gets to make it across because everyone else falls before them. The gang decides to give each other numbers. TJ gets appointed first. One. The highest risk is number one. Thanks, TJ. I understood how to play the game before you told it to me, but now that you told it to me, I understand how to play it again. This is crazy. Wow. What the? Yeah, this is epic. Everyone takes one turn. So then Roland, the person at the back, says, how about we do this? It's a more pragmatic approach. Everyone takes one jump. That way everyone has a 50% chance and it's not the people with the highest numbers at the front going on. Most people agree, some people don't. And it sort of shows their character. Some people are willing to be team players and take that 50-50 risk. Some people are like, I got the high number. I'm, I'm not doing it. If we do that, that's fair. It's everyone has do a 50-50 for the whole yes. thing. Do we agree to that? Yes. I agree. No, it's every man for themselves. Yeah. Oh, now it's every man for themselves. You were about a man before. That's all I had to say. I was, I was really drunk right now. <laughs> yeah, just, just can, we, we just need to communicate with each other and trust the decision. That's it. Absolutely none of that actually matters, my homie. This is seriously has almost zero requirement for other people to trust your communication. Genuinely, all you have to do is pick left or right and jump. That is it. You don't have to give one of your speeches, TJ. This is not the championship NBA. TJ would go to Chipotle, order it correctly and be like, it's like winning MVP in the NBA. It's the same thing. And TJ shows off his hella vertical by jumping and he lands flush on one of them. Things are looking great until... Oh, oh my God. Oh. This guy lands, he's done. Legend. Someone says legend when Trey lands. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> Trey does land. He's Trey Maddox. He's hitting them trays every day. I'm overtaking. You're overtaking? Yes. Oh, that's some low vertical right there. So the girl jumps. I think her name's Marina. She does do the 50-50. She actually uh, gives it a chance. But unfortunately... Oh, please, 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 please. She falls fully straight, by the way. I don't know if they actually like put this in post-production, but like she fell like, and I just put down as a note, RIP Marina, bangs were not always on point. I'm sorry, Marina, those bangs is not, I don't know if they're the most fashionable. I'm just saying. They'd lift up when you go down though, so that's good. Marina stupid as hell, okay? Like Damn, she just died, bro. What the hell? Marina stupid as hell. She just jumped in front of everybody just for fall. Damn, I thought this was gold power. You didn't have to kick her while she was literally falling down. I turn around and I see 278 and she's not moving at all. So here's where some shit goes down. Trey decides to jump. He makes it over to the other side and he sees that the person behind him is not overtaking him. Everyone agreed to do a 50-50 jump and the person behind him is like, nah, I'm not doing that. And it leaves Trey to jump alone. And it's really sucky because everyone agreed to do that, but she pulled out. She basically backstabbed her team by not wanting to be that person. I don't remember agreeing to this. I'm not sacrificing myself when I already have a low number. Right. What are you doing? No. Trey just doesn't like a swan lake type jump. He's so graceful and he lands it. And the episode ends. We're on episode eight already, guys. I know it started off real slow. It's going pretty fast. Episode eight, everybody for themselves is what I named it because people stop backstabbing the hell out of other people right now. We played games all the time. We, we shoot hoops. Like my dad really pushed me to, to study hard. You. So Trey's dad made him shoot hoops and it's really tough on him. Come on, dad, I'm tired. You can go to bed when you score a basket. And this led his amazing ability to jump so high. You can see like Michael Jordan would never. And he actually lands it, but. Yeah. Yeah. Just chill, take your time. Things are not as good as they seem because Trey looks back and he sees that nobody's passing him to do the 50-50. So it looks like Trey's either gonna have to have a series of amazing jumps or actually get trapped out. And Trey sees that nobody else is doing it so he makes one last heroic jump. Oh my gosh. Trey, what are you doing? What'd he do? He died for a sense. No. R.I.P. Trey. He died doing what he loved, his mother. What? It was really sad to see Trey go. He just feels like one of those perfect people that come once in a million, you know? Seeing him get eliminated. Okay, so Roland is apparently either gay or just very friendly. I'm not sure which one it is, but he was like, Trey is one in a million, and I didn't even know this was a thing. Roland waited until way too late. Just like many people, he waited until it was too late to confess his feelings to Trey, who's dead now. Come on, man. I got all the way to the front. I can no longer hide. I have no choice but to jump. I'm going there, man. Not going home. Uh, Gambu Gang's last member, who is very sweet, is like, I'm not going home, man. And then he does the worst jump I've ever seen, but makes it. I am so scared. Jackie's gone. What's the sign like? Oh, it's this one. <laughs> All right, <laughs> okay. I am devastated. Oh, man. And we're crying again. You know I trust you. Oh, Chad. I wouldn't be here without you, so you tell me, Mai. That's a lot of pressure, Chad. Somehow Chad and Mai developed a relationship slash friendship. I have no idea when that actually came about, but Chad is now so dependent on Mai that he makes her choose which platform he wants to jump off, and she just chooses one, and he does it. Hi. It's on me. Left. <gasps> oh my gosh. He jumped so high and so hard, I thought even if he hit the right one, he would fall, but he did. Yeah! I'm just hoping my ancestors do me well to survive this game. Then ancestor lady comes and she brings forth her ancestors to play Squid Game, which seems like almost disrespectful. I feel like they went through a little more than Squid Game in their lives, but all right. But she makes it. Psych. She's done. Ancestors failed her yet again. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. That wasn't her. It was the other person. Someone else's ancestors failed them. But there is one more cry to the cry counter.
Emoji guy jumps and he's done. His face is literally the sad Snapchat filter. Like you can do the sad Snapchat filter and you will get his face. I feel like they modeled it off his face. No! no! Completing the bridge doesn't feel like a victory. That's funny because it is a fucking victory. And it turns out that some of these people survive. Woo! It looks like there's less and less people and more and more chances for me to turn the series off. But here we are. I'm feeling scared because I'm like, they're going to get another chance to like vote people to eliminate. And they're going to eliminate floaters like me first. Floaters is what happens when you do a boop boop and it doesn't go down the toilet. That's nasty, man! I'm falling off my chair, man. So my mom and dad, they were married when I was super young, but I never seen them together. Both of them, I would say, you know. That's way better than them getting married when you're super old. So I think that's pretty cool that your parents were married when you were young. Mine were even married before I was born somehow. That's crazy, isn't it? Hey, hey, but uh, don't, don't judge a, a horse by the color of its horse skin. You know what I mean, Ashley? Like, you know what I mean? Well, what does that have to do with me? No, no. What I'm trying to say is you stab people in the back. You know, got it out the mud, you know. Uh, neither one of them grew up, you know, with their parents. They kind of had to, you know, get it on their own, you know. Make oh, shit, Ashley, I do know. You don't have to keep asking every five seconds. What are you, depending on me knowing? You know. I know, I know. You don't have to keep saying, do I know? You know, you know, you know. I know, I get it, I get it, Ashley. Um, I would describe my mom as, you know, strong, tough love, you know, hard. I know, exterior, oh my God. You know, hard, exterior. You know, if she removed the words you know from her vocabulary, she probably probably would be very, very like good at saying sentences. Like she'd be like, I Ashley, I go now. And then things would be so much faster, you know? And so right now I have to pretend friend because like I'm going to need the numbers. Between Ashley narrating, the white people have a dance off for absolutely no reason. And they dance like exactly how you would expect people of that caliber to dance. I mean, come on, what the fuck is happening? My family, they moved to Nepal in 1992 and that's where I was born. Um, I was there for 16 years. While Ashley was saying, you know, a hundred times, we actually get a different dude. This is the last of the Gambu gang guys. And he explains what it's like to be in a third world, like seriously. And when I watched this, I resonated. I was like, yeah, I feel that. I was born in that, lived in that, understand that? I get it. It's different for different people. We never had an electricity and it was very poor medical care. I thought that was normal. When I see now, when I, I realize how tough it was. I thought he was going to say something like, if I win the money, I'll bring it back to my village but he was just like yeah man i see how tough it is with this money it'll be way less tough and it'll actually be way less easy to see uh how tough it is to, for poor people to actually do things because i'll be rich in my private jet so he's just wanting the money to get out of that place good on him oh, holy oh, crap no. they're rolling dice it is now time Woo. for your next test before the test begins you must select a leader the next test is everyone gets in a circle and they roll dice. Someone designates if they want to eliminate themselves or another player and they call a number between one and six. And if they hit that number, either they or the person they designated to eliminate gets eliminated. Mine's been my go-to from the beginning. Do you know what? I, I think my, my would be my choice. If you roll a six, one player must be eliminated. My bad, it's only if you roll a six. I genuinely thought that it's the number they call because that makes way more sense. But apparently you have to roll a six. It's like Rick said, I have 18 children, so six is my lucky number. Choose to nominate yourself or you must nominate one other player to be at risk of elimination. I'm sorry, Ashley, I have to nominate you. My in in instantly nominates Ashley instead of herself when everyone else agrees to nominate themselves because that's what, like they say, is the most pragmatic things. It's interesting to see at this point. It's interesting to see at this point. In the series, most of the players actually are now working together to give themselves an equal chance to win. At the start of the series, people were like, it's cutthroat, it's whatever. <laughs> But at this point, more or less, all of the contestants are like, I'm going to give myself an equal chance to lose a win, and that should be fair. People are prioritizing fairness, and unlike Lord of the Flies, where they just turn into anarchy, more people are playing the game in the way of rules because they feel like that will give everyone the best odds and opportunity to win. I nominate myself because we ball. Thank you, guys. Uh, I'm done. I'm done with this stupid-ass game. I'm... 
cutting. I never heard someone say something like that. What does that even mean? It's a dice. How are you bull? We bull? What does that even mean? Bro, you've never said anything this whole- the only thing Roland has said this whole series is that he loves Trey and that he's one in a million. When it comes to dice, he just brings out the blackest line I've ever heard. We bull, and then starts rolling dice. If you had a do-rag on your head, you couldn't be more hood. What the fuck was that, man? Hey, you called it though. I'm choosing my. It lands on the five. One short of six. B gets eliminated because she says she's good at math and always rolls sixes. So she rolls a six and eliminates herself. I don't even know why you'd put that in the air. And then Ashley nominates Mai, but neither of them eliminate each other. A lot of rolling is going on and this episode is just dragging its feet at this point. Let's go for it. Let's do it. Let's do this. Purna then rolls, and unfortunately, being the magician he is, also rolls a six. Player 31, you have rolled a six. Oh, oh my gosh. Come here. Crazy. And with that, the last of the Gambu gang is out. Someone else cries. I think Chad gets eliminated. And Mai is very unhappy that Chad rolled a six. I don't know what the hell has happened between them to forge this friendship. It's the most unlikely friendship I've seen. But she's very sad. And she acts like he's her dad and he's leaving and never coming back. She pushes him and then hugs him. Between Mai and her, like some of the guys, one guy said he sees a lot of himself in her. Chad and her seem to have a very weird relationship. I feel like her husband needs to do a little sus checking. <laughs> Chad was sacrificed. <laughs> no, he wasn't, Ashley. Chad rolled the shit himself. That's not even what sacrifice means, you crazy. L everyone literally had a... F like one in six chance to eliminate themselves. He was not sacrificed. That's not how sacrifices work. Oh my God, learn to speak properly. What is wrong with you, Ashley? It's episode nine and I called it end me right now because that's how I feel. Jeez. It's gonna be zero nine. Okay, zero nine. Oh. Digit. Thanks to the one lady who saw nine players there and said single digit. So now we know that there's less than 10 people there. Thank you. She's still playing this little lady role. Bitch, you ain't fooling me. I ain't fooled not one lick. Everybody's walking up to her. Oh my God. Um, so my lost Chad and she's still sad. It feels like uh, like a Gulf War or maybe World War II where she lost him and like he's never coming back when in reality he's just going home to his family. Maybe she wanted him to be part of her family. I don't know. All I know is that she's crying and Ashley wants to eliminate her and uh, that's about that. A good friend who's been there. Oh, she's crying <laughs> in interviews. In because Ashley is my good friend. And when you nominated her. So now we meet, I think his name's Sam. This is the first time we meet him. The first time. We're on episode nine and we're meeting people for the first time. I feel like there's a little problem with that because I don't know if I really care about him as much as I care about anyone else. But it doesn't matter because I don't know half these people. I didn't feel any animosity towards you. I understand it's a game, but I think we're all just agreeing on a game of civil decency. Can I talk to you? Yes. So then Ashley gets taken aside by Mai, not before Sam takes Mai aside and says, I don't like what you did nominating Ashley. And it's now a drama thing. This is like Survivor, but in Squid Game form. And Mai confronts Ashley and says, I didn't see you doing teamwork. I was in the Navy for 20 years. Every day we did teamwork on each other. We double teamed each other every day. I don't know if she actually said that. I'm just making that up. But the point is, Ashley was like, yo, I did not do that. I jumped like everyone else. And she's straight up lying to Mai, even though everyone saw it. I'd, I've never seen someone lie so blatantly before what did you see that you didn't jump i jumped why the fuck you lying i turned around after i passed i said okay y'all i made a jump why you always lying I ain't moving no more. Every she said none of that. Like it's on camera of her not saying that. Like not only didn't she say that, she literally said the opposite. This is the worst lie I think I've ever heard in my fucking life. She went out of her way to not say that. She went out of her way to tell Roland, why don't you jump then? And now she's like, I was saying to everybody, we need to be like a team and all jump together. In fact, I said, we should all get on the same square and jump so we either all make it or all die. Everybody, we need to work together. Mm -hmm. As a team. I deeply apologize for that. Okay. Thank you. I received that. 
Yeah. The interaction ends with my feeling her kneecaps, which is something only two ladies can do to each other, because if a male does that, this is done. This, this whole show is over. That's so strange. Oh, I don't like this. Looks like there's a little gift in the middle. There is a gift in the middle, bro, and your eyes are not deceiving you. A lot of this show is a lot of people commentating on exactly what the fuck is actually on screen. People like uh, Ashley at one point saying she rolled a six and she's like, that's a five. One more and you get a six. It's just very, very simple people playing this game at this point. I don't understand. They saw a gift and the dude's like, I think it's a gift. Trust. Now is one of the final games, Circle of Trust, in which everyone gets blindfolded. It's sort of like Duck Duck Goose for blind people. Basically, what people do is one person taps them, and when they tap them, they allocate the box to another person. The person with the box has to guess who actually nominated them. If they guess correctly, that person goes home. If they guess incorrectly, they have to go home. It's a pretty deadly game. My dear friend, Roland. Can't be a dear friend if you're gonna eliminate him at the first chance you get, is it? My, I guess we ball, but we also, we don't have friends who actually appreciate us being ourselves, huh? Damn, Roland has to figure out who it is, and he doesn't suspect it's my at all. My. Who's gonna do your hair? You go for me? No, I wouldn't. Well. You my dog. No. Ah, oh, throwing up the white flag, but it's green. Man, for no reason at all, Roland says, you my dog, to an elderly uh, Asian lady and then daps her up. And it just seems like this is a just blatant disregard of every hood economics or something. This is just the craziest thing I've ever seen. Neither of them are dogs. <laughs> I don't understand what that is. I think the player who gave me the gift box is D1. The next player to be eliminated is... Player he nominates some random goal. She's not it, and Mai has double crossed him. And with that, Roland is out. At least he gets to be with Trey now. One in a million. Roland, RIP. We ball. I do honestly believe my biggest threat is Mai. In my profession as an adjudicator, I analyze Player people. Player 429. Oh. So there have been claims that this game has been rigged and certain people were made to win it. And this is one of the few times I looked at the game and thought there is no way that a certain person can choose a random person based on their reasoning. And with Mai just saying she knows how to read people, it seems almost impossible that a certain person would be more sketchy than the rest. Now, I think I'm pretty good with micro analysis myself maybe I'm not as good as my at all but I think it would be very hard to tell in a circle of people accurately every single time the one but if you think my guessed it right that's fine later on in the series some dude is gonna guess multiple times the correct answer without even doing any questioning of any sort and I feel like that is rigged because he's not anything other than a surfer so one of you has tried to eliminate me Someone nominates Full, the Hawaiian surfer dude. I think he's a scuba instructor. And he decides to monologue his way through choosing who it is. For no reason at all. Nobody told him to do this, but he decided this was his moment and he needs to do the fame thing. So he starts monologuing and turning into an evil, long-haired genius. I have my suspicions. I think the player that gave me the gift box. I believe it was Rose, player 051. Not only does he do a weird monologue, he pronounces every word and then points to the person like he's in a fucking movie. So he walks around and he's like, I believe it was Rose. You have done it to me. Can you imagine how cringy that would be in real life if your friend just started talking weirdly when you played a game like you're playing Monopoly and he's like, I am the dealer now. We will deal in money and I will kill you if you go to jail. Like, just a normal dude that would be crazy player 51 oh somehow full correctly guesses that it's rose for absolutely no reason there's no reasoning and this is where i feel like how did he actually get that far this game is rigged man like how did you correctly guess that with so much accuracy that you could point at the person if i had no idea who did it and there were six or seven people i wouldn't be pointing and making accusations of people because if i got it wrong it would be the worst cringe of all time so i feel like there might be something rigged here so i put the present on Philip's desk. It must be hard not being the person with the most beautiful hair in the room. Again, Full gets the box on him, but it's actually more dangerous to everyone else because Full can guess with 100% certainty. And not only that, he monologues his way through this one too. And Ashley, friend turned foe, perhaps? Could be. Or was it my? 
player 278. Again, this mofo actually points at someone with entire certainty, and for no reason at all, his deduction is absolutely correct. Why? I don't know. His Hawaiian slash scuba skill has turned him into the most impressive deducer of all time since Sherlock Holmes. Ashley. Player 278. And with that, she's gone. Self Ashley is her name. Player 355. Some other player leaves, but I don't know who she is. Pretty much my reaction, Sam going, bye. I don't even know who she was, but full eliminated her. It looks like the water level rose or something. Whose box did you put on the desk? It was, uh, I put on Amanda. I then lies to the last two, and we have the last three contestants about who she eliminated. She said she eliminated some random person when in fact she eliminated Roland. And with that, we have the final episode, episode 10. If this vid just gets 1 million views, I will join the next Squid Game and die inside as I watch other people cry over money. Woo! The final three people who we didn't think were going to be there at all, who didn't get talked about until the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth episodes. Love my strength. When you do the episode that, starts with a recap showing them highlighted. I actually think it's a good filming decision, but we don't actually get enough of them. I wonder why they didn't actually add these people at the start. If they did interviews with the whole cast and crew, why they didn't feature them more in the coming episodes, because we don't have enough time in the 10 episodes to really feel for them. I don't feel for Mai as much as I'd feel for Rick, because I got to know him earlier, and I think that's a big flaw in the filming. Never thought I'd make it this far. Four million five hundred and thirty thousand dollars. That's a lot of cheddar. <laughs> oh, sorry. I don't know. I'm just very drunk. Players, congratulations on making it through the game. We have prepared a special dinner for you. Please. So in the actual Squid Game, the last dinner is one of the final things, and they end up fighting each other. <laughs> I wish they would do that. I wish they gave everyone paintball guns and they said, winner takes all or something. But they don't do that because this game has now become an arbitrary match off. Someone gets eliminated for just choosing the wrong random thing. And the final is actually literally just that. Please change into these outfits. No more is it a game of skill, it's just a game of luck. And I feel like a lot of people would feel betrayed and cheated if that were the case. Unfortunately, this is the episode. It starts off with the characters getting in three suits, including Mai, and they sit at a dinner table and eat a fine feast. Um, but when I did come out, my mom wrote me several very hateful, nasty emails, and then when I blocked her email- Turns out Sam's mom is a, uh, not a nice lady. She doesn't seem to like gay people for whatever reason a lot of people have backwards mentality however sam waited until this point to talk about the story and i don't think that winning this prize money would really change that sometimes i feel like squid game just asked the contestants to say anything that will tug at the heartstrings of people so that they feel more affable towards a character i understand sam's plight i get why he's feeling like that and i wish him all the best however i don't think this helps with him winning the money i wish he had said it in a different context where people would be more aware of this. In the game Squid Game, I don't think people would be like, yo, that's the guy from Squid Game who helped all the gay people do cool stuff. Also, just by the way, if your mom happens to watch Squid Game, she's going to have to handwrite a lot more letters considering how many people of color and gay are in the series. I have not spoken to her in a while. And then my family just uh, cut me off. Oh, she's no crying way. again. What my cry, <laughs> my cry. So this is like the end of American Idol, where it's like, not only am I going to sing you a song, but I'm going to make you cry before I do it because like everything is like I'm, I'm just saying for my family my dad was diagnosed with uh, um, dumbassery and my mom got stuck in a tornado so she's actually stuck in the chimney she's actually clapping for me right now from the chimney every time she toots fucking smoke comes out the top of it and then the other contestant will be like I was born with one hair I have one hair syndrome and like everyone else is like damn I'm just a good singer but these guys are not only good singers but they have to have a tough come up and now we get to see all of these people talk about how they've had a tough life. And again, I appreciate it. I think any one of them deserve to win it, but it makes it a bit less valuable when you see all of these people not win it and only one people get it. And that's crazy. At least on American Idol, if you don't come first, you can still get a recording contract. In this show, if you don't win, you get fuck all. Final game. In front of you are three buttons. I am 
very happy to go first. So every person has a 50% chance of actually winning this or getting through to the next round. One will turn green, one of these shapes, one will turn red and they'll get eliminated, one will turn gray and nothing will happen. I don't know why they did it like this. I have no idea why they decided to play such a random stupid game at the end. I'm not sure if this was in the original series. I'm just maybe drawing a blank right now, but it feels like a very weird way to eliminate one of the contestants to have only two left at the very end. Your button is gray. I initially assumed that they would either all do a three-way thing, like a Mexican standoff of some sorts, or actually eliminate someone in a way that revolves around skill. But essentially, this is just a lottery thing, and you get a 33% chance to move on to the last and final round. Play 287. Your button is gray. This My picks and hers goes points. gray. And this means that either Full or Sam gets to choose the next color. And because there's only two left, one will go through if he hits a green, or he will hit a red and not go through. It depends on who wants to make the decision, and Full allows Sam to make the decision. And he picks. Player 16. Sorry, Sam. Eliminated. And this leads Full to cry because Sam gets eliminated by putting his big palm over the square button and getting eliminated. I said eliminated twice, but I'm drinking 30 shots, baby. I've never drank this many shots. Anyway. Just ripped away by, by, by chance. Wow. Yeah, Sam cries, I can't tolerate drinking anymore. But essentially, Sam pretty much explains the problem that the series would have, is that if it's not known as a series off chance, getting eliminated this close to the end by chance would be very, very shocking and disruptive to people. If it wasn't a game off chance at the start, it would feel like that. However, if it was a game of skill and Sam got eliminated not being as skillful as the other two, then I don't think he would feel the same way. And it just feels pretty, pretty sad to have him eliminated by not picking the right shape. But anyway, the last two people are there. There are only two beds and they get to see the money close up. It looks amazing and I want to steal it. Welcome to the final game. We'll now play rock, paper, scissors. Here are the rules. No, I know, I know the rules. Uh, the final game is Rock, Paper, Scissors. A classic childhood game of chance. I guess this one's okay, but it's not just that. Every time someone wins a game of Rock, Paper, Scissors, they get to pick a lock, put it in the safe, and hopefully turn the right thing. So it's a double game of chance. At the end of the series, Squid Game turned into a absolute ample game of chance instead of one off. The winner of each round will select one key and attempt to open the safe. For whatever reason, they do a rock, paper, scissors, and instead of doing it like normal human beings, they hold it up like this. My holds a sign that's uh, two inches lower than the Heil sign, and Full holds a sign that's two inches lower than the Black Power sign. So I don't know why the fuck they decided that was the way they're gonna do it, but they did it. Each of them opens locks after winning a few times and it seems like no one's getting it until Mai actually gets it. The chest opens and just like that, Mai wins Squid Game. 455 other contestants and she made it through. It's amazing. There should be confetti everywhere. A celebration is in order. Player 287. Congratulations, Mai. She breaks down crying. Full says, congratulations, Mai. Today, just validate that anything is- And that is it. That's how the series ends. It's very anticlimactic. I thought there was gonna be way more. They should have got all the contestants waiting for her. At least in Survivor, they bring everyone back for the last episode. They did not do any of that shit. It ends with Mai giving a speech on how if you just believe you can win, which is bullshit because this was just a game of luck at the end. And if Mai used any of her skill set, she might have not have done it. If Mai tried to attempt to do this again, she might have got eliminated in the first round for all we know. Even when you feel down, you have to pick yourself up, be a strong person, and focus. 
She says that you have to be a strong person and focus. No matter how many weights you lift or no matter how many Advils you take or something to focus, you would never win this game again. And I feel like it was just a series that left me in absolute shock, but not for the right reasons. I feel like the show started off really well, but it didn't end well at all because it was just a game of chance. She ends the show by doing a werewolf scream and we get an epilogue screen. <laughs> We see that guy, Brighton. He does push-ups because that's all he's good for. TJ makes a long shot because he plays for the Globetrotters. Chad has a family, so that's cool. I guess he's not having sex with Maya. Or maybe he's on the Vespa on the way to Maya's house. I don't know. Good morning. Rick has a family. Stefan has a family. Ashley has friends. The cookie dude uh, who pees on his bed, he's happy. Oh, B just looks at things. Oh, and Mai puts her card into an ATM machine and her balance is four million dollars. Let there be love. The last scene of Squid Game sort of betrays the actual show Squid Game and sort of shows everyone having a good life despite not winning the money, which is essentially not the point of Squid Game because everybody on the show needed the money. Showing everyone in their natural environment just being absolutely fine and thriving despite not winning the money is pretty, pretty much kicking your own game in the face. And I feel like that's a perfect ending to one of the most polarizing series of all time. At the very end of Squid Game, there is a note. Are you ready to play Squid Game? And it says, are you ready to play Squid Game? And it has a series for squidgamecasting.com. And that is where I leave you guys. I just watched almost 10 hours of a series to try and make sense of it. And the best thing I could come up with is that in the 10 hours, they achieved some sort of feat where they got the most players they've ever got doing a reality TV show, which is a landmark. They unfortunately didn't know how to do this or how to categorize this. And the games were not well thought out. People were tired. They claimed they they were hurt, bruised, and also wanted to sue. Whereas other people claimed that the food was so good and the service was so good that they were checked on months after the show had ended. It turns out those people were people who were famous on TikTok and IG and often did sponsorships. So their credibility is in question. At the end of the day, we have a show that is 50% unique and groundbreaking and 50% absolute dog shit. The decision is up to you. I don't know if this is a good show, but hopefully they do do another one. And if they do do that, then my doo doo face will go on it if we reach the landmark. I'd like to go on it. Maybe I could use a 21 and a half week rest. I'll just sleep in the bed. And if I get eliminated, then I do. But this has been the last video of the year. I hope you have a wonderful year. I'm sure we'll be watching this sometime in January, so it won't make as much sense. But take care of yourselves and let's hope 2024 is fantastic. Take care of yourselves. Bye. And I love you. I love you too, you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>